Well, like it says, holy crap. This bridge collapse up in Baltimore. I'm looking at the pictures and video. It's just insane. Welcome to the MJ Morning Show. MJ and the crew here just getting rolling. Tuesday morning, 6 o'clock exactly. And the video's nuts. Fester, have you seen the actual video? Uh, surveillance video capture. Watch, uh, turn around, turn around. Yeah. Look, look, look. look. Yeah. I mean, look, look at this thing. It's a, a massive span. A major bridge up in Baltimore was hit by a freighter, like a, a cargo container carrying vessel. And, and, uh, and what was the name of the, the ship? The ship is named the Dolly. The Dolly? D A L I. Is that oh, the ship oh. right there that it's falling on? Right there? Uh, yeah. and, and in then, smoke? And then the, the ship, the ship then apparently sank. Right there, look. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. yeah. You can see yeah. the ship get crushed. Oh, yeah. yes. Then you've got people that were on the ship. You had cars on oh, the bridge. That's horrific. This is a, an unbelievable story, and it just is reminiscent. It makes you think of the Sunshine Skyway. Totally. Which collapsed back in 1980. I wonder what happened. It wasn't like foggy or nothing. It didn't look like. No. Uh, it, weather looked remarkably clear. Clear night, yeah. He just hit that one humongous span. He hit, uh, a, he hit the pillar. Hit a or pilot. The pillar, yeah, yeah. The, the ship. Uh, I don't know whether it lost power. Let me, let me go to WBAL Television. There's a lot of stuff today. Today's a, a really busy day, so we got a lot of stuff to cover. The governor up in Maryland has declared a state of emergency. After the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after a ship struck the bridge. Yeah, the collapse was reported around 1.30 this morning. It's a 1.6 mile bridge and it carries the Baltimore Beltway. Interstate 695. So it's, uh, you know, you've got like a loop around Baltimore. 695 is a connector off of I-95, which we all know I-95 here in Florida and all the way up the East Coast. So this bridge takes traffic over the Patapsco River. You have an unbelievable response. Uh, officials from all over Maryland, the Virginia response. You have the U.S. Coast Guard involved. You know, I'm looking at the video here, and this, I don't have a full uh, history on the bridge, but it looks like it's an older bridge. It opened in 77. So this bridge is 1977? Yeah, it opened March 23rd of 1977. Right. Uh, it's a, I'm trying to think. They started building it in 72. So it's a, what, a 40, 50-year-old bridge almost? 45-year-old bridge? Yeah. Yeah. 1977. All right. So how much of it fell? A humo- look at the thing, a humongous yeah. span. It's the the massive, the highest point of the bridge, and it's hundreds and hundreds of feet of this bridge has fallen into the water. Any word on how many people were no. on or traveling? Because this is an interstate. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's it a is. bridge, but it's yeah. an interstate bridge. There were cars on the bridge. I'm sure there were cars and trucks. If there is anything that there's no positives here, but it happened at 1.30 this morning, so the traffic on that bridge was nowhere near what it could have been if this had been rush hour. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm reading Fester. It says, this is currently a mass casualty incident, searching for seven people who are in the river, but then when MJ and I were listening earlier, they said 20, so I don't know if they've found some of those people. This this was updated 10 minutes ago. Yeah, CNN said at least 20 people. So you've got casualties clearly on the bridge. So motor vehicle traffic on the bridge up in Baltimore. Then you have the people on the freighter. So at least 20 people. I got to believe that number is going to climb even higher. Yeah, the ship was called the Dolly, D-A-L-I, as in Salvador yeah. Dolly. Yeah, know. same last name as him. Yeah, and uh, Andrew's telling me that the water is 48 degrees 
So, Get some cold water. Yeah, people that have fallen into the water, that's some cold water. But this is a major, major disaster, uh, huge emergency response, a huge bridge hit by a cargo vessel, a container ship apparently, and it caused this bridge to collapse, and it was all caught on video because there was a surveillance camera that pretty much did a horizon shot right across the whole harbor, and you can see the ship strike, and you see the bridge just coming down. Can you imagine? So this is a photograph I pulled up in front of you, MJ, of the cargo ship Dolly. Uh, flag is Singapore. Uh, it is a uh, what's the size of the ship? ship. I mean, I'm yeah, just 300, at, uh, 300, uh, 300 meters. So, so 48, it's 48 meters. Yeah, no, 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 no. The no that, that's the beam. that's the beam. That's right. the, the width. Yeah, 48. I'm about to say, yeah. that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. So it's, yeah, like, like 300 meters, which is uh, just shy of a thousand feet. 300 meters is going to be what about 980 feet somewhere in that vicinity. And then the width of the ship is uh, 48 okay. uh, uh, mm-hmm. meters, so that the beam is huge on this thing. And uh, we're looking at a picture of the ship, and it's one of those massive freighters where you see all those containers, you know, like the Costco and the um, uh, Maersk M- Mer- M- containers, yeah. all those metal containers <laughs> Uh, that would be stacked like, you know, 10 high on the deck. So this is a, a big damn ship that crashed into the bridge, and the bridge has collapsed. So we're just getting rolling here, just a, a crazy... And I'll tell you what, the, there is something really weird. I don't believe in, you know, spooky, woo, I'm, I'm not into all that stuff, but Roxanne is. But uh, I had... Something that occurred on Sunday night just before I fell asleep. And I don't know why this popped into my head. But I'll tell this story later on. Sunday night, not last night, night before, Sunday night, I'm I'm getting ready to fall asleep. And I just thought of something. And then I grabbed my phone and I started doing a a couple of Google searches. And it's just 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 weird, just time, and I'll, I'll get into that later on here on the MJ Morning Show. So the governor has signed in the social media ban. Uh, we'll get into that later. I don't know how you enforce that, you know, so it's kind of a feel-good deal. But it's going to be a busy, busy show today here on the MJ Morning Show, 608, as we just get rolling. Pat was in here, our traffic guy. And he's like, oh, man, Sunshine Skyway, 1980. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, v- chillingly similar where a ship got lost in the fog and smashed into the old Sunshine Skyway. Uh, you had, you know, many casualties on that bridge. You know, the uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge is very reminiscent of the Skyway in its construction. The original, so? the original yeah. Skyway Bridge was uh, was a metal bridge. Thirty five wow. people died on the Skyway. Most were on a Greyhound bus that was in the wrong place at the wrong time and fell into Tampa Bay when that ship hit the Skyway back in May of nineteen eighty. Because that was rush hour traffic, as I recall, right? I don't remember. Was it morning uh, yeah. traffic? All right, six oh nine. Just getting rolling. Back in minutes. Don't move. MJ Morning Show on Q one hundred five. Here's Pat with traffic.
MJ Morning Show on Q105 621. I think we agreed yesterday we would try another jack wagon jury this morning. Froggy, you weren't here for this. We did the jack wagon jury on Friday morning, and the response was fantastic. And, and Fester was a parking lot cleaner.
What the hell are y'all talking about? You know what? Andrew, Jack Andrew, Wagon Andrew, Jerry. Andrew, can we go back and pull that that guy? I think his name was Bill from Spring Hill. I meant to say this yesterday to you, Andrew. What the hell are y'all talking about? Fester, Jack Wagon Jerry. Fester was cleaning a parking lot. Was he angry that you stole the job from him or something? Or? I don't know. Yeah, something about you took his job and you got yeah. him. It was, it was, you were a street sweeper. It made no sense whatsoever. And we know you had a lot of jobs, but sweet sweeper, street sweeper isn't one of them, right? But, you know, um, I, I'm thinking he was talking about, if you've ever seen late at night or early in the morning, you ever see... Those like vacuum trucks. It's not like a full blown city street sweeper that comes around the neighborhood. And we get those in Tampa. I live in South Tampa in the city of Tampa, maybe twice a year. I and you can kind of see in the you can, you can kind of see the like the the track mark, almost like like snail or slug marks. You can yeah you can see where the street sweepers have been. You know, when I worked at Publix, one of those rolled through the parking yeah, lot at midnight that, every night. Yeah, that's that, the one that it sucked it. up all the garbage. Uh, so I tell you what, later on, Andrew will try to find that audio bite where this guy calls up when we're doing Jack Wagon Jury, and <laughs> this guy's like accusing Fester of. Of did he accuse you of stealing his job or something? Or he started off by asking if I could recuse myself from the jury. I'm like, why? Just <laughs> because it involves you. Yeah, I have a lot of guys with a lot of beefs with me in this town, but none regarding street sweeping or parking yeah. lot. The the Jack Froggy the Jack Wagon jury. This stemmed from an issue that I had with a bartender last weekend up in New York, and I, I got into a fight. Over the I remember right, that the bitter or the yeah, old fashioned, the yeah. old fashioned. Oh, that's right, you were here. Yes. So then I was thinking, you know, because uh, I, I asked people on the air, I, I said, "Hey, you're a bartender. I mean, how do you feel about this bartender totally botching the drink and then acting as if I was the maniac?" And that kind of prompted, "Hey, maybe we ought to do." And this is not a new concept. We'll put a, new, a little twist on it, but you know, have people call up. With their kind of bizarre situation, their incident, you roll your incident by us, and we are the jack wagon jury. Essentially, oh, you, we're the jack wagons. Oh, no, 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 no. We're the JJs. Oh, dude, oh, dude, dude, yeah. The callers are the jack yeah, wagons. No, yes. the, no, potentially the, the potential jack wagon. We are the oh. we are the jurors that will decide. Whether they are the jack wagon, when they tell us their story, we have to determine, are they the jack wagon? So I thought it was very successful. On Friday, we just kind of impromptu said, hey, call up. What kind of an incident have you had? You know, you heard my story with my fight with the bartender that tried to half-ass a, an old-fashioned, you know, a, a bourbon drink. Can I make a recommendation? Yes, Froggy. How about we, what is a jack wagon? You know, I, I think we should call it a jackass jury. I thought the same thing. I mean, jack wagon is such a... Is that a wagon pulled by a jackass, a donkey? <laughs> no, <laughs> well, it's, it's pulled by a man named yeah, Jack. We... No, I think historically... and Did you make up this word? He, he did. No, he did. I did yes, not. Did. No, I did not. That oh, is a derogatory. That, that is I like false. It. No? I like it. No, but it's, but it's wrong. A jack wagon, I believe, was the last wagon in a wagon train. That's the caboose. But, but listen... But it became synonymous with like a, a stupid, lazy, dumbass. Okay, oh, really? So, yeah, that, I stand corrected. You didn't make it up. Yeah, a, I, jack, I didn't make I, wow. I just told you I didn't make it up. A jack wagon is a slang insult meaning worthless or lazy. Yes. Really? Yes. yes. I didn't yeah. make it up. I'm not, listen, I'm not going to take credit for making up no, a jack I, wagon. I, I, I just have heard you say it for years. I've never took the time to look it up. So you don't think we? Are, I think Jack Wagon is funny. Well, now I that think. I know the definition of Jack yeah. Wagon, it makes more sense. I mean, yeah. Jack Wagon. I just think it's funny. And listen, we educate people. We bring uh, a, a word or a term uh, more to the forefront. You know, hmm. Jackass. I'm Jackass Jerry. Am I the? Jer I like Jack Wagon better. You were a big ass hat man. You, you know what? Maybe we ought to go to the phones and ask people what do you like better, Jackass Jury or Jack Wagon Jury. I mean, listen, you've got ass clowns, you got ass couches, you got ass hats, right? I like Jack every, Wagon. Every couch is an ass couch, right? Well, t yeah. technically, yeah. unless you stand on your couch and you don't put your butt in the couch. Tom Cruise in it? 
I, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the whole yeah the whole Oprah situation. So well, I'm I, excited. Were you doing it again today? Yeah, I think we will. Ooh. I think you know we're not going to do it like every day. You know, maybe we'll settle on once a week for the Jack Wagon Jury. And listen, it's all driven by the stories. We had good stories on Friday because we were debating Froggy whether if we do do the Jack Wagon Jury, you know, somewhat regularly, once a week, once every ten, whatever it is. We were debating, should listeners send in their stories via email, and then should we then call those people back or set them up to come on the show to tell, read the email, let them tell the story, and do we do just one jack wagon jury? And then we kind of decided that going to the phones and just taking, you know, three, four, five stories and kind of quickly rapid fire go through them and kind of randomly take phone calls and listen we get what we get and we don't get upset instead of like asking and soliciting for emails fester you you're a fan of that right are you mumbling what are you doing you're mumbling you're talking to yourself i'm reading the closed oh. caption of an of a youtube video where a guy breaks down does a deep dive on the <laughs> definition of a jack wagon I, I don't, okay <laughs> apparently it originated from a military term when militaries would have long trains of of uh, of wagons. Here, rewind this guy. Yeah, hold on. This guy, I saw in the closed caption, I saw he said poopy head. What? <laughs> hold, hold on a minute. Let me yeah. Turn, hang on. Let me turn this thing up. Let me turn the uh, audio on. And call him a poopy head. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What is, what is that? Uh, it, 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 shake his hand. Yeah. And call him a poopy head. Oh, I got to roll this back. Rewind. Re 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 it's a minute long. Rewind. About if I ever met that guy who called me that, what would I do? All right, here we go. Let me roll, go to the beginning. Uh, I think the first thing that people will notice about my new book, Diary of a Jack Wagon. <laughs> guy wrote a book? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> diary of a jack wagon. What is a jack wagon? He goes into it. <laughs> the guy wrote a book, Diary of a Jack Wagon? All right, let's listen to this. Uh, I think the first thing that people will notice about my new book yeah diary of a jack wagon is the title um what is a jack wagon well i didn't know what that was either <laughs> a couple years ago uh on twitter i tweeted something out one day and this guy didn't like it and he called me a jack wagon <laughs> and find out that jack wagon is a term that uh, comes from the military yeah. right, so let me write a whole book a guy on twitter called me a jack wagon well, he, he, he's writing, <laughs> he's calling himself a jack it's not all about jack wagons that says now his he's adopted it uh, here we it go sounds like it years is ago when the military needed carts and stuff to haul stuff around. They didn't have them. They would have to use parts from old things that they had, whatever was lying around. Right. <clears throat> Basically junk and put together these carts. And these carts would always break down and they were very unreliable oh, and where's the undependable. Here. And I'm like, that's me. I am a jack wagon. That guy was right. <laughs> Sometimes I think about if I ever met that guy who called me that, what would I do? And I think, honestly, I'd probably just look him in the eye and shake his hand and... Call him a poopy head. <laughs> so this guy wrote a book about him. Oh, God. This guy's a comedian. He's a yeah. he's like known for yeah. he did some yoga pants skit. That's yeah. a satire. Yeah. yeah. That, that's so. like, you know, you know those docu a mockumentary. Yeah. You know, that's what it's like. It's like a mockumentary. But he's his facts yeah. are right. I mean, it's probably the military term of the last uh, wagon that carried all the equipment that always broke down. Shut up, poopy head. All right. All right. So <laughs> we'll do the Jack Wagon. I like Jack Wagon. I do. I will right, we'll do Jack Wagon Jury. Eh, maybe around 8 o'clock this morning. So hopefully you stand by, you keep listening. That's the key with the show. You got to listen to the whole damn thing. You got to figure out how to listen every single day. Early morons of the news. Great pile of early morons. As always, there is never a shortage. Never a shortage of the morons in the news here on the MJ Morning Show. We will get into P. Diddy later on. Just a, a quickie here. P. Diddy. Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, whatever. I don't even know what, what, what his current iteration of his name is. But he had two homes raided by uh, the Department of Homeland Security. There's like a whole sex trafficking investigation. You know, you've had like at least four women, you know, claim that they were sexually assaulted or abused. So P. Diddy, Sean Combs, he's got some issues. And Two homes, a home in Beverly Hills and a home down in Miami, were simultaneously raided by the feds yesterday. And there were shots of his two sons in handcuffs. Uh, saw that. 
And, you know, P. Diddy was asked for his response, and he said... I'm shocked at this information. Oh, sure. I imagine he'd be very surprised. <laughs> There's a guy that direct messaged me last night on Instagram. He's like, yeah, what's the over-under that you get to play? I'm shocked at this information. On the MJ Morning Show, I said... <laughs> I just started laughing. Yeah, <laughs> I went, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I think it's... I'm shocked at this information. Yeah, all right. Hey, so early morons in the news next on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105.
Feeling good. Ready to feel good because when you hear about these morons, there's only one way you can feel. You gotta feel better about yourself when you hear these uh, morons in the news. Uh, it's six forty at the MJ Morning Show. MJ and the crew, in no particular order, just a, a variety of uh, idiotic moron studio uh, stories today uh, here on the MJ Morning Show. Uh, this is in Pennsylvania. And state police there are looking for a moron, well, actually a crook, a criminal, a thief, stole $5,000 from a casino patron who won at the slots, put the wad of cash in their back pocket, it fell out on the floor, and this thief was on a mobility chair. He drives by on a motorized wheelchair, grabs the money, and oh my gosh, and just takes, takes off. This is not a thief. This is finders keepers. Oh, oh, leave it to fast. This is finders keepers. Uh, yeah, a leave. thief is you. Know, hey, stick him up. Give me that wad of cash in your yeah. back pocket, or you club him over the head. That's a thief. This guy's he found it on the street. Yeah, found finders keepers. <laughs> no, no, he didn't find it on the street. He found, he found, wherever he found it, on the floor of the casino. The, the, keepers. the patron won at the slots, went to the, the cage, the cashier, whatever, collected like five grand in cash, 
and then went back to the slots and the money. Let, let me give you the story Dude, here. This is an FKLW. Uh, That's on the uh, Patreon. Uh, Finders, uh, keepers, losers, weepers. Oh, yeah. FKOW? LW. Oh, Finders, Finders keepers. keepers, losers, weepers. That's okay. what this is. Right. This is don't, not- don't try to say those letters together. FKLW. No, like, like sound it out. <laughs> No, don't do it. Don't do it. I said, don't do it. Here's an acronym. Here's the story. These are the actual facts. This is from uh, WTAE Television. That's a big station up in Pittsburgh. Cops are searching for five thousand dollars stolen from Rivers Casino's floor. The suspect stole five grand in winnings. Troopers say the victim won a slot machine jackpot was paid out in cash. However, when he sat down to continue playing, the money fell from his pocket onto the floor. Police say a man in an electric wheelchair. You know, they've got cameras everywhere. So they they caught the whole thing. They see the guy you know, going by in the mobility wheelchair. He's just scooting right along, sees the cam. I guess he couldn't have been that injured if he if he was able to bend over I guess he doesn't have that much of a disability. If the guy's bending over, scooping up the cash, don't you say to somebody, "Oh, sir, I think you dropped something." No. Yeah, of, of, I would do it. You're not obligated to. I, I, I think most in the studio would do it, except you, Fester. Fine. Because yeah. this, is I mean, fi- mm. this is finders keepers losers no, no, it's not. If you're in a casino, you're sitting on a chair in front of a slot, and you drop money on the floor, you don't just grab it. I would think it's a and, setup of some sort and take it exactly. I'd be like, this is some sort of deal. But that shouldn't even go through your mind. Froggy, I don't even want to hear that from you. But what you're saying is, you know, the first thing that goes through your mind is not returning the money to the rightful owner or saying, hey, sir, you dropped a big wad of cash. You're thinking, hmm, if I grab it, will I be caught? Whatever, dude. You're the one who put an extra 50 grand on my check or 20 grand or something on my check oh. and tested me. And you asked me why I'm like that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and it took me a few days. Do you, Fester, you remember this story? Yeah. Do, oh, man. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's illegal to do, oh, first of all. Man, this is a oh, classic, classic MJ morning show story. Yeah, you and Yolanda. I got with our, uh, our bookkeeper, Yolanda. She was great. What happened to Yolanda? She I think was, she owns a business now. Where's her Yolanda? She's yeah. the best. Uh, she was fan. I love Yolanda. Yolanda was like our our bookkeeper. Uh, this is over at, uh, at Clear Channel, the old company we used to work for. And I just wanted to test Froggy's honesty. And this is, what year was this, Froggy? Integrity, ethics, everything. Yeah, the whole thing. What year was it? I don't know, like 2002 or something. No, I, think Three. Was, I think it was a little later than that. Four. A like, little later. So Five, I don't care. So I got with Yolanda... And I don't know if you could do this crap today, but she arranged to have, was it $20,000? Yeah, I think it was like 20000 extra dollars, yeah. and do I know remember, I didn't get that many gigs. Ba- back then, back then, what was, if, just roughly, what was your paycheck every two weeks? <laughs> I don't know, like $2,000? Like every two weeks, whatever Wait, it was? Every, yeah, it was, right. it was relatively low, and still so, is. All right, so Froggy, <laughs> hold on. So Andrew's giving you a look. Two, wait, two thousand. Wait, yeah, let me see. For, for, Dude, I was making like thirty five thousand dollars a year. Yeah, so two grand, a grand a week is fifty two thousand dollars. Oh no, yeah. I wasn't making yeah. that. Yeah. No, I was making like thirty two. Uh, so, all right, so uh, still for, trying for, to get to that number. here. For the sake of the conversation, let's say the the paycheck was uh, nine hundred eighty dollars or or eleven hundred dollars, whatever. I think it used to be like twelve hundred bucks. All right, whatever it was, because it's a, it's a two week pay. <laughs> yeah, I had the accounting lady. Put twenty grand in. So, f- just to test Froggy, if Froggy gets a paycheck that is like twenty times his normal paycheck, wh- what will he say? Will he go to accounting? Will he say anything? Oh man, I think think they made a mistake in my paycheck. We put twenty thousand dollars extra in Froggy's <laughs> paycheck. <laughs> was it, so that was the old days too, where you actually were handed a physical check rather than it just get directly deposited. Yeah, right? we were handed checks. But why don't you say what happened? I don't remember. You got to refresh my memory. After a couple days, I owned up to it, and I said I went to Yolanda, and I said I think there's been an accident, unfortunately. <laughs> in my pants. And uh, she's there's like, been an accident. And she goes, "Oh, thank God!" <laughs> she came in and she told me the stupid joke, 
And I go, what? You, then we did the big reveal on the show. To, you lied to me? Yeah, we we did the. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's like I think, I'm pretty sure it's illegal somehow. I yeah, it does sound illegal. I, I forgot actually, about that. I, I I completely forgot about. Listen, the number of things that has happened regarding the MJ Morning Show over the years. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that I've just forgotten about. That's but, a good way to test somebody's but, uh, integrity. Though. Yeah, I, I'm wondering though if that's. If that's like some kind of intentional infliction of emotional distress, if like yeah, the, these yeah. Da- are you saying is that like is and this... and uh, uh, laundering other people's money? <laughs> no, this that's not money laundering. Well, Whatever it, it is, it was the company's money it's, that you moved to his yeah, account. Yeah, you're moving around money, man. It has nothing to do with money laundering. Your lawyer call me up. Anyway, <laughs> I think the statute of limitations has run out. The statue is still standing. <laughs> no, there, strong. there's no. It's not a statue. It's a statue. <laughs> oh, whatever statue. But that's a funny story. Testa, and he did. It took. We were waiting. It's like, oh man, is Froggy going to say anything? <laughs> and it, it, it was like what two, three days. It was a few days. I had to contemplate. And, and, and Froggy, hmm, can I get away with this? Are they going to find me out? There's twenty thousand extra dollars in my paycheck this week. But I couldn't I, figure it out. Yeah. I was trying to figure out how this happened. I'm like, what did I? Did, did I earn this? I don't think. Yeah, I did. maybe you had a really good week. <laughs> no, no. Oh, man. Anyway, so back to the casino. The money fell out of the gambler's pocket. Police say the guy in the electric wheelchair sees it on the casino floor right behind him because he goes back to play the slots, finds the money, and the guy in the wheelchair just picks up the money and keeps just scooting right down and leaves. Yeah, troopers, uh, this is up in Pennsylvania. Uh, State troopers say the victim uh, was paid out in cash, continued playing, uh, police say the man in the electric wheelchair picked up the cash. By the time the victim noticed that his cash was gone, oh, where's that wad in my back pocket? Oh, I don't feel the wad any longer. And by the time he realized it, uh, the guy in the wheelchair was gone. So now yeah. there's a there's a manhunt for the guy, and they've got if surveillance. You want to look at the? They, they, they've. Um, Sorry. What are you playing? I try to play. I try to find it on. Yeah. Uh, KDK. I, 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 I don't think we need it anymore. I want to see the video I, of the guy. He put that thing in turbo mode. Yeah, got right. Out of there. What, what is he it? went from turtle to rabbit. <laughs> Say that again. Oh, oh. Uh, hold on. Let me grab line uh, six. Hi. Good morning, MJ. Morning show. What's your question? Hey. Good morning. This is Bobby from St. Pete. Hey, I just want to know what would have happened if Froggy didn't return the twenty grand. That's a very good question. That's something we had thought about. We didn't really have an answer. Yeah, they didn't yeah. quite figure that part we, out. We didn't think it all the way through. What, you what? can't fire me for it because you set it yeah. up, right? Well, yeah, we kind of set you up. Absolutely. Yeah, Thank we, you, sir. We set a trap. Good point. Yeah, but uh, listen, yeah. I, I think you could have been terminated for lack of honesty. Is that what? entrapment? Uh, it's entrapment. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the word that's, I'm that's looking the, for. That's the word I'm looking you for said, too. You set up a trap. Yeah. It's entrapment. Yeah. Trap is in the it, word. I think only cops can do that. Entrapment. A good question, dude. We we didn't think through that far and what if froggy doesn't return it you should have Damn, tested well, fester i appreciate it. that's awesome all right buddy thanks for listening have a great day that's what would you have done if you did it to you not me I've never said a thing see mm-hmm. that's the difference well that's a given with fester <laughs> I mean, you're just a i don't know why you test me gaming scoundrel <laughs> sorry right. dan i don't know anything about it 650 at the mj morning show early morons of the news and the guy in the wheelchair is still out there with the five grand and they got like 300 cameras like every angle they got him going to his uh, vehicle in the parking lot i guess they cameras didn't get a license plate number though they're still looking for the guy how good are these cameras I, I, you can't get a yeah, license plate. get a license plate number how about that hey I got something really, really sweet for you. Now,
Morning Show, MJ, Festo, Roxanne, Froggy is back. Welcome back, Froggy. How was your... Thank you. Thank God. How's your time yes. in Houston? Hey, it was great. You were in Houston, what, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then you flew back yesterday, Monday? Yes, sir. I got we a new you. account, Gallery Furniture, had a meeting with Mattress Mac. No, oh, you didn't. I know I didn't. You, <laughs> Mattress Mac, the guy that bets like ten million dollars on the Super Bowl, and then he win like like fifty million dollars. He's the best. He makes some insane bets, and he yeah. ties it all back to his business. That's right, Mattress Mac. One of the big stories uh, that's you know, shaking the country this morning is this massive bridge collapse. Now that the sun is up. Looking at the helicopter shots and the various angles, this is a massive, nearly 1,000-foot freighter. This is massive breaking news. About 1.30 this morning, a huge cargo vessel with containers, the shipping containers stacked up high, rammed into a huge bridge up in Baltimore, causing a complete collapse of the bridge. You know, the latest that we have, uh, seven people went into the water. Uh, there were reports of two being rescued. I got to believe it's more. Also, there are reports of injuries on the ship. You know, early on, when, when I first woke up this morning, there were some reports that the ship had partially sunk. And now that you can see aerial shots, that ship looks like it's, Pretty intact. I mean, the, the ship is, you know, it, it's crashed into the bridge. You can see part of the bridge is collapsed onto the deck. But this this bridge is gone. Uh, we're going to get into this in more detail later on. And I don't know if you caught it, but last hour, I was talking about something kind of weird. I don't know if you call it coincidental, but just something kind of odd regarding bridges and collapses. That happened to me on Sunday night. So I was going to, I'll tell the story later on, but I just want to, want to give you a little teaser here. I was going to bed on Sunday night, not last night, Sunday night, and something prompted me to do a quick little Google search on a couple of bridge collapses. Actually, it was, it was one bridge collapse tied to like a uh, an insane, um, like a legend so if if I'm it sounds like I'm rambling and babbling, I'm not. I will make it all crystal clear coming up. But they have a massive tragedy. The uh, Baltimore officials are calling it a dire emergency. This bridge, hundreds and hundreds of feet of this extremely high metal bridge, which carries Interstate 695 in Baltimore, is gone. It is it has collapsed. The bridge smashed, or the uh, ship smashed into one of the pilings and caused this whole structure. There were cars on the bridge, but it happened at 1.30 this morning. Can you imagine if this would have happened during the rush hour at 5 or 6 o'clock last evening yeah. or in the morning time like now? Can you imagine the difference that would have been made? I'm looking at a picture of the bridge, a still picture of the bridge seconds before the boat hits it or the freight liner hits yeah, it. Yeah, there is video. There's a like a skyline harbor shot from surveillance cameras, and the whole collapse was caught on video. It's all over the place. But you can see yeah. headlights. Oh, yeah. Oh, headlight, yeah. Headlight. Or if the guy fell asleep or something. You can absolutely. Where were the harbor pilots? Don't, don't the harbor pilots guide? Anyway, we'll get into this in more detail later on because this also reminds you of the Sunshine Skyway collapse in 1980. God, there's like 500 shipping containers on that thing. Uh, it's probably Where more. Where was it going? Probably How heavy. Uh, I believe it was going to Sri Lanka. So it was leaving Baltimore, loaded with containers. So it was leaving the United States and apparently headed to Sri Lanka over in the Indian Ocean. And didn't get too far. Didn't leave Baltimore. What a what a, a crazy story. And the video is just tragic. And it, you can't look away from the video of the bridge collapsing. 
And I mentioned the the white van, a white van warning. It's a busy day. You got the whole P. Diddy thing, which we'll get into in the long segment coming up after 725. Remember, every single morning at around 725, we launch. We start an hour and 20 minutes plus of nonstop MJ. Every single morning, Monday through Friday. No music, no commercials. We go for an hour and 20 minutes plus with all MJ content. I saw an item about a guy in a white van. And I don't need to get into you know all the details here, but this prompted me just to remind folks about stranger danger, white vans, because do you remember the... the near abduction in Beach Park a couple of years ago? No. Well, we talked about it on the air. We had the mother that phoned into the show. Yeah, it was a couple of blocks, I think, what, yeah. east of West Shore? Yeah. And uh, there was a, 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 a high school student that was yeah. being trailed while she was jogging. Yeah, so... And she well, was friends with one, someone who works here, the mother, or someone was related to no, someone who works here, No, right? no, the mother just called into the show. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah. so here's the deal. What prompted me is I, I saw an item, and this uh, is out of uh, Michigan, out of the Detroit area. Uh, man in white van offers child candy. I mean, really? I, is that, that's real? The the old... Uh, you want some candy, yeah, kid? Yeah, I, I, I guess that's... Or, hey, yeah. you want to see the little puppies that I have in my van? Yeah, you got to teach your kids. Do not go up to vans offering you candy or a chance to see and pet the puppies. Ooh. What, Whatever, yeah, don't, don't do it. So this just prompted me to... And I warned Chloe. I had a conversation with Chloe. And she was laughing at me because I, I said to her, hey, you know, when when Chloe does her jogs, you know, she'll do jogs uh, in yeah. the neighborhood. Well, you say, stay away from well, white vans. Hey, I, I warned her and she was like laughing at me. OK. <laughs> and, and she was like, yeah, what, what am I supposed to do if a van full of guys tries to abduct me? I'm like, Chloe, run. <laughs> you're, run. You're, you're out there running anyway. So I saw this story. It's out of the Detroit area. Uh, cops have issued a warning after a man in a white van offered a child candy. The kid was walking home from school. The guy approached them and said, hey, I have some candy. You want to come to the van and, and pick out some candy? What you got, uh, mister? Yeah, that, that that doesn't seem that that's going to end very well. But then when I saw this, it reminded me that actually a couple of weeks ago I had a conversation with Chloe. I don't know why. I don't know why I brought it up. Is but candy still a, a lure to, to to a van for a grown woman? You mean a lure? Lure, lure, <laughs> a, lure, lure. a lure, lure. It's a, I got it's some a lure. Charleston uh-huh. cheese for you. Yeah, listen. <laughs> Circus peanuts, anybody? <laughs> I do love circus peanuts. So, that might work for me. You know, I, I I warned Chloe. I'm like, hey, just be alert. And then when I saw this white van candy story, I also remembered that we had the story in Beach Park and there was a, a jogger. She was like 16 or 17 years old. It was a, a young female, 16 or 17, that went to plan high school. And this, again, this is like in Beach Park. And if you know uh, Beach Park uh, east of West Shore, I think it was like off of Sylvan Ramble is a street just to the south of Swan, and it was back in there, and it was believed that a white van tried to snatch this female teenage jogger, a, a plan high school student, off the street. And it was a neighbor that saw what was going on and scared the white van away. But it just could have been a whole different story and scenario, and you know, I, I thought I would bring it back up. We, the mother even called up and yeah. talked. To, remember, we had her on the show. The mother called into the program and said, hey, that was my daughter. And then here's a, a white van offering kids candy up in uh, Michigan. I'm just, listen. So I, they haven't caught this guy yet. No. They're still looking for him. Yeah, still looking. Hey, do you think, do you think this is accurate? I saw this. I'm like, come on. If you are lonely, according to health experts, if you're lonely, it's worse for your health than being obese, being an alcoholic, or smoking 15 cigarettes a day. 
All right, first of all, how do they come up with that number? <laughs> yeah, good question. <laughs> 15. Fifteen. Yeah. Not fourteen. Yeah. A- according to research, researchers say that loneliness is a major biopsychosocial stressor, and it's worse. For some people, then alcoholism, obesity, and smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Yeah, This is a new study. Pub- I don't know if I believe. Do you believe that? That being an alcoholic, smoking 15 cigarettes a day. What a- so wait a minute. If you smoke 16 cigarettes a day, that is suddenly worse for you than being lonely? Yeah, I mean, look what like, <laughs> uh, Anthony Bourdain was lonely. Yeah, no. he was like heartbroken. Then, yeah, no, he, he was lonely. He was having uh, problems with the girlfriend, is what that was. And then he took oh. some action of his own. Bad example. What yeah. would what would loneliness do to you physically? I mean, does it make you? Are you less inclined to go out and do stuff? Maybe you're not going to exercise as much if it's just you. Sounds like uh, depressed. Yeah, what does it do to you mentally that then affects your body? But it still doesn't seem like it could do the damage of 15 cigarettes and, and alcohol. It doesn't, or being uh, you know morbidly obese or something. But listen, stress is real. Stress can cause, uh, you know, heart issues. So, I mean, stress is real, but when you look at it in, like, the context of specifics, it's like, really? Hey, you're lonely, and it's worse than being an alcoholic, being a, you know, obese or smoking a... How many How many cigarettes in a pack? Is it 20? 20. 20, 20 yes. Yeah, also smoking almost a pack of cigarettes a uh, day. My, my 15 limit, I got five yeah. left over for 20. All right, we start an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ next, including... The P. Diddy story. Uh, Sean Combs, man, it seems like he's in trouble. Now, is Sean Combs, is he going to like follow R. Kelly to like federal prison? If you don't know the P. Diddy story, we've got it. We're going to launch the Jack Wagon Jury again. We're going to do the second voyage of the Jack Wagon Jury coming up in just a bit in the next segment. Hey, an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ means we have a lot next so don't move here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Hey, speak.
Let's uh, kick off an hour and 20 minutes plus of nonstop MJ right now. MJ and a crew, 727 on a Tuesday. Oh, on the lottery front. So what I see, no winner for last night was Powerball, right? So no winner again for Powerball, but there was like a million dollar winner here in Florida. Yeah, let me get, let me get my uh, my Powerball and Mega Millions straight. So last night, let's see, Powerball is what Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday and Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. All right, so Powerball three balls, all right, and then. Th- three, 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 three drawings a week, <laughs> and then Mega Millions is only uh, uh, two, two balls, yeah. so to speak, a, a week. So More. yeah, let's right. deform. Yeah, so <laughs> that's spectacular. Yeah. Only two right. balls. So last night there was a million dollar Powerball ticket that was apparently won at a Seven Eleven in Ocoee. Ocoee, yeah, beautiful Ocoee. Isn't that the near Orlando, Ocoee, right? I have no idea. Yeah. Orange County, yeah. Ocoee, O C O E E. Ocoee is a city in Orange County. Yeah. Oh, it's near Winter yeah. Garden. So is it near, that's what I said, near Orlando, yeah. o- Ocoee. A uh, 7-Eleven sold uh, a $1 million ticket, uh, but nobody won the big jackpot. So what happens? It was like $800 million, So now it's going to be an estimated $865 million bucks. And then Mega Millions is now up to 1.1 billion because no one matched the drawing on Friday night. And when's the next drawing for tonight? So tonight. So it, it so Mega Millions is a Tuesday Friday. Is Tuesday Friday. All right. So Mega Millions is now going to be over 1.1 billion dollars. Unbelievable. Hey Froggy, any Huh? Any follow up on uh, yeah what? on the soccer net that I gave your kids? No, I mean it was kind of a. I don't think it was the coolest move on your part to put him in that sort of situation. Oh, come on, you you think? I don't on. think it was that. I appreciate the net. That was very fun. No, come on. I was trying to make it fun for him. It's not. Nah, that's not fun. <laughs> come on, it was fun. Did you tell him if he didn't do it right, some he might kill people. <laughs> well, it's not cool. <laughs> Did you tell him that? Dude, did, you, were did you, you tell w- him? Were you here yesterday? No, but did you, you say, did you? I said that you got to hold the string, that you're the last line of defense, that if you let the string go, that it could fly out of the back of the pickup truck and crash into a vehicle, and they could have a fiery crash, and it could be a minivan full of nuns. I'm Okay, I missed yeah, the okay. nuns part. Or, or a school bus full yeah, of kids. Yeah, I thought you said school bus full of kids, yeah. I think I used various I mean, things. Just, you don't see a lot of nuns around yeah. lately. Though. Or school buses like on Sundays, <laughs> I thought I'd make it fun for him. Yeah. So, listen, I tied down the net. If you don't know the story, folks, Chloe doesn't need the bounce back, kick back uh, soccer training net that we had in the garage. It's it's a big thing. It's like six and a half feet long. It's it, it takes up space in the garage. And knowing that Froggy's kids, Max and Luke, knowing that they play soccer, you know, I said, hey, Chloe, you want to give this to Froggy's kids? She said, sure. And then while Froggy was out of town, Kim rolled by yesterday, or uh, Sunday rather, with Froggy's pickup truck. We loaded it in, and we couldn't close the bed because uh, you have a, a short bed, so we had to drop the tailgate. It didn't extend past the tailgate, but I tied the thing down. I, it's not it, that short. It wasn't. Listen, it wa- the net wasn't going anywhere, but I thought it would be fun. Yeah. I grabbed some kite string. And I tied it to the back of the the net as it's you know butted up against the back of the bed of the pickup truck where the the window is, and Froggy has the power slide window. I tied some kite string around the back of the net, and I rolled it through the power window. We closed the window, and I tied it in a loop. And I said to little Luke, "Is he eight? He's nine. Nine now." Yes. I said to Luke, "I said, dude, you got to hold the string in case." My tie job fails. You're going to be the last line of defense for preventing this net from flying into a car at 65 miles an hour, causing potentially a fiery crash. Oh, my God, look out. What a fire. Oh, my God. Oh, the humanity. And then your wife, Kim, took a picture of him in the back seat holding the string. 
Very stressed look. <laughs> he looks miserable. I'm sorry. I thought I was going to make this fun for the kid. Anyway. He so, got over it eventually. I, I, so look, Froggies, you're fine with it, right? Oh, yeah, great. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Traumatized. <laughs> it's, it's like microdosing of traumatization. Yeah. Uh, uh, we talked about it yesterday, but I wanted to get Froggy's reaction now that he's back. It's great. It's great. Yeah, Froggy's back in the studio. Good looking boy there, and Frog. if you have not seen the, the picture. When it, he smiles, he's handsome. Listen, the, the, the picture is. It's like he's got the face like when I take away his iPad. Somebody saying <laughs> the F word. <laughs> Wait, your nine year old is dropping the F bomb? No, he says, What the freak? But it's close enough for us, you know? Like he'll lose in a game and go, What the freak? And we're like, Whoa! Oh, that's a little too hey, close to. Uh, back it down, tough yeah. guy. Give me the iPad. Yeah, Give H- it over. Hudson is into saying flipping. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Are you really? close, or what yeah. the yeah. flip is. Because well, what one. happens is, you know, as they watch stuff or absorb media, a lot of social media people, instead, they don't use profanity in yeah. their videos, but they'll say, well, what are, the flip? There are plenty yes. of social media people right, that use plenty kind of, of profanity yeah. in their videos but as the kids well. Videos. Mr. Beast doesn't. Yeah. Unspeakable yeah. doesn't. Uh, some of those other clogs. Bluey. Like, uh, Chewy, who? Cluey? No. Bluey. 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 Yeah, but like, yeah. get the flip out of here. Uh, anyway. Shut the flip up. My kids say, what the? What the? And then they don't say anything after that. And, and MJ. Hadley just started the bruh phase. Oh, oh no. no! Yeah. Oh, I had a I had a yell bruh. at Chloe. Bruh. You know, over uh, Chloe's twenty two now, but Chloe's been in bruh phase not as much anymore. But you know, late high school, man, I had to really tell Chloe if you call me bruh one more time, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna bruh you over the head. Yeah, the first bruh was a couple yeah. of weeks ago, and she said it kind of sly, and she kind of was looking at me after she said it. Bruh. And I glare right back at her, yeah. shaking my head. Nope, not the bruh. Anyway, if you haven't seen the Froggy's little nine-year-old kid, uh, Luke. Oh, great. Use my kid to promote your Instagram. Oh, absolutely. Great. I don't think I, I gave you permission I, I for this. Pick, I picked up 175 <laughs> followers yesterday yeah, because, yeah. Of, that, yeah. because yeah. of the string thing. I'll have him flick you off next time. Yeah, so, you. I'd get some followers. If you have, it's a classic photo. And Kim, Froggy's wife, took the picture while she was sitting at a traffic light at West Shore and Kennedy after leaving my house. Took a picture in the back seat. He's holding the string, and he just looks like he's a just. What absolute... if that thing did fall and oh cause God. a crash? He would have been traumatized for life. Is that your supercuts location in the background? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Wow. Right, right back in that oh, yeah. uh, shopping center. Yeah. Absolutely. Ha. I can see uh, ha. Hi, yeah. ha. 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 Uh, so, what if it had flown into Ha's store? <laughs> yeah, ha in the head. Ha. Yeah. 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 Ha. Ha would ha like that. Oh, no. It's uh, it's great clips, by oh, the way. Oh, great clips. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I it's, apologize. It's not, it's not supercuts. It's, yeah. it's, it's great clips. You know what? It's got to be the hair. Yeah. All right. So if you haven't seen the picture, it's on my Instagram. It's a classic photo. It's certified MJ radio. <laughs> That's certified MJ Radio. Oh, did you see my meat last night? Ugh. Did oh man, did I'm you? I'm not a Patreon member. I didn't get that <laughs> access. Listen, you. What do you say? <laughs> That's good. I said that I'm not a Patreon member. I, I, put a, I didn't get that private access. I, I, yeah. I, I put a picture of my meat on my OnlyFans last <laughs> yeah, night. Yeah, the special meat picture. I've got my. I've got a big, huge chunk of meat. Great. You um, go for pictures of my kid to your meat. Oh, this is going well, <laughs> Dan Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What the hell. Uh, no, I. I got a 37 ounce uh, Delmonico or a uh, a ribeye. You know, same thing. Delmonico ribeye. I got a, a 37 ouncer. The uh, the USDA choice was on sale at Publix for twelve ninety nine a pound. Yeah. That's a pretty good price. That's a really good price. I found this massive cut, thirty seven ounces, Jeez. bone in ribeye. I uh, broiled it up last night. Oh man, it was fantastic. That's like five meals. Oh it's man, like the big ninety six or oh, and Chloe, man, you ought to. Chloe was like a, a ravenous carnivore beast last night. Yeah, so I I cooked this thing up. Oh, I thought it was all for you. No, it was, uh, Cl- was Chloe. Chloe ate more than I ate. Wait, you know, didn't we see you eat one that big at our at our company dinner? Him and Andrew shared yeah. it, one fork. Okay, yeah, that's right. I've seen you eat a lot of meat. Yeah, listen, tomahawk. But choke it down. You know, I <laughs> I shot a video last night. This was my first steak in a couple of months. Wow. I, I love steak, but I don't eat a lot of steak. The uh, when was I? Uh, maybe a month. Of, when were we? We went to la- last steak I had. Is it the w- Sizzler? No, <laughs> the, la- the Ponderosa. La- no, the last steak that I had, Golden Corral, dude. Come on, <laughs> come on, man, get it right. It was the Golden Corral. All right. No, the last steak I had was at the Hard Rock. Was at Council Oak. 
and it's like a month and a half ago. I mean, I mean, close to two months ago. And I love steak. And this was this is a nice steak. You, you listen, folks. You need to look at my meat from last night. And uh, I I pan seared it for about three minutes aside in the carbon steel pan. Then it went into the oven. And ooh, just perfect medium rare. And uh, if you want to see my meat, it's it's on my Instagram as well. What a great! And then the the healthy purple Okinawa Japanese sweet potato. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Bourdain. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, bore, boring. boring. <laughs> uh, on my Instagram, it's certified MJ Radio. The bridge collapse up in Baltimore is massive. It is a tragedy. It's a uh, I mean, this is just, uh, you know, a throwback to like the Skyway collapse here in Tampa Bay back in May of 1990. Uh, Andrew saw a little earlier that there were apparently seven people thrown into the water. Uh, Andrew, do you have an update? What's the latest now? I'm just reading a headline. I don't know how this connects. Maryland State Transportation Secretary confirms contractors working on bridge at time of collapse. Oh, God. Oh, that sucks. So maybe the bridge was in a compromised state. Well, hitting the the support of the bridge is never good, whether the contractors are there or not. Yeah, the bridge is called the Francis Scott Key Bridge, and it carries I-695, an offshoot of I-95, uh, which rolls through Baltimore. This is I-695, the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Oh, you know what? Instant trivia. Hey, Froggy. Yes. Froggy, yes. who, who was Francis Scott Key? The writer of The Godfather. Huh? No, that would be Mario Puzo and the director. The director, the director was uh, Francis Coppola. Damn it all. Yeah. Ask me again. Uh, don't, don't look this up. Put your phone down. No, hands up. They hands see. up, phone down. Okay, go. So the bridge that collapsed at 1.30 this morning up in Baltimore is the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Uh, he was I'm, a pianist. Uh, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm giving you the wrong buzzer because preemptively because... Uh, I, I, he was a pianist. Okay, kind of right. getting warmer. Was, just was, did he play the organ? No, no, no. Or did no, he play no, the no, large no, pianist? No, he, let, he was a pianist I, that I, plays the piano. All right, listen. I, okay, Frog, think about it. Be, be serious. Okay. Francis Scott Key. Okay. Who... Who? Come on, think about, dude. How do you not know this? This guy is the inventor of the keyboard. Ooh, yeah. Focus on the key, but not not no. keyboard. This no. guy is the inventor. Froggy, <laughs> no, of the not house an inventor. Key. Francis Scott Key. How do you not instantly know who mm-hmm. fr- the bridge that collapsed in Baltimore is? The Francis Scott Key. Oh, bridge. that's what it is. It's, it's the bridge named <laughs> after Francis Scott Key. What is I'm Francis just Scott? Key? Well, who was it? He's a general. <laughs> Of General of Warts. War, General Warts. General Warts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know he who he is. He lived mm-hmm. in that time when mm-hmm. General Warts might have been a bigger thing than it is today. Professor, do you know? I know. Okay, can I do a nose oh, tune whatever. for you? Can I do a nose tune? Yeah, sure. I don't know if that's the right song to do a nose tune <sighs> No, to. I don't think no. I think no. Maybe not. Oh, no. he's a writer. Yep, you're getting there. He, he, he wrote a song. He wrote a song. I gave you that part. He wrote a song. A very, very well-known Song. Happy birthday. Well, that that's <laughs> a good that, guess. That, that is well known. known. Come on, Francis Scott Key. Oh, he say. Oh, <laughs> oh. When he wrote, when people sing this off key, it gets booze from the audience. You the, got it now. The spectators loving you is easy because you're beautiful. Oh, <laughs> that's loving you. <laughs> oh, that's is easy because you're beautiful. Oh, we guys. <laughs> Yeah, let me, let me hear the high note. Ah! And stadiums would boo. And that was, you're and, so and go home, you my know, boy. That the singer of that song was Minnie Ripperton. Minnie Ripperton, the mother of Francis Scott Key. No, Mickey Ooh. Mouse. Maya Rudolph. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's right. Maya Rudolph. Maya mother. Rudolph from the band. You know what? The I, rentals. I, I saw a podcast where that song was written for Maya Rudolph to like shut up and stop crying. I saw a 
YouTube video Rudolph about Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Let, okay. Fro- Francis Froggy. Scott Key, what song? Okay. Okay. Come on, Fry. God Froggy. bless America. No, wait, well, you get yeah. America the Beautiful. You're close. Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> <laughs> you're, uh, you're dancing all around it, buddy. All right, the one that really, 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 really meant a lot to people named Jose. Oh, stop Jose, it. can you see? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jose, oh, can oh, you see? That's... Remember? Yeah. Oh, Jose comes to America. He writes back oh, to what a great place this because everybody cares about his eyesight at sporting events. It's the Star Spangled oh, of Banners. Jay. Yes. Francis Scott Key, the bridge named after him that collapsed in Baltimore, he wrote the Star Spangled Banner. So uh, Andrew said that there were like uh, workers working on the bridge, like, you know, a, a lot of construction is done overnight. Yeah. So there might have been uh, apparently workers on the bridge. Uh, some reports about seven people being thrown into the water, uh, injuries on the ship. Uh, the ship is intact. I well, mean, the, the front of it like exploded. No, well, well, it, it's or it something the, did. It hit the support, and I'm looking at a picture of the boat in daylight, and it doesn't seem like this horrific, horrific damage. They didn't lose a lot of cargo. No, the cargo is pretty much intact. The bridge is gone. Only like a the- massive. Have they said how many hundreds of feet in the bridge? This is a huge, high metal bridge that carries I-695 through Baltimore, and the bridge is gone. This massive freighter smashed into the bridge at 1.30 this morning. Where the hell were the harbor pilots preventing this from happening? With the, you know, the tugs. You know what I bet you they have on board video of it? Uh, you know, no indication... Right. Uh, well, listen. They, they always have like oh, a whole camera. Oh, they've oh they've got cameras up on the bridge. Oh god, that'd but, be horrifying. But the and I'm talking about the bridge of the ship, not the bridge yeah. itself. But there is a, a horizon shot of the bridge actually collapsing. You can see the bridge come down on the ship. Uh, it's going to be a while before we have, uh, I think, a, a full tally of loss of life. But uh, vehicles must have plunged off this bridge. The one saving grace here is that it happened at 1.30 in the morning, and it didn't happen at uh, 5.45 during rush hour in the afternoon. I mean, how many times do you think this bridge, you know, has just has bumper-to-bumper traffic, oh, yeah. gridlock uh, traffic? Plenty of times. I'm sure plenty. Yeah. Uh, no indication of terrorism. Well, duh. Uh, how about how did it happen? How long does that take to figure out? The yeah. bridge is in the middle of the ship. That's I how mean, it happened. The, the ship bridge. See, what? so the captain has to be okay. Uh, there are some reports that it might be a stuck rudder. Listen, wait for the NTSB and the full investigation. But uh, sonar has detected the presence uh, the presence of vehicles submerged in the water. Oh no! That's according to uh, Fire Chief uh, James Wallace. So cars did fall off the bridge into the water. Did all 1.6 miles of this bridge collapse? Uh, I don't think no, so. it's, but it's it looks like it's a good quarter mile. I mean, it is a it is hundreds and hundreds of feet. The main span, the highest main architectural span, Ooh. collapsed but then like when, like a like a toy into the harbor in in Baltimore. It's a nightmare. Yeah. So at least seven people are uh, still missing. Uh, the uh, ship was chartered by uh, Maersk, you know that Danish company. FBI is there. You've got uh, unbelievable emergency response. There were two people that were plucked from the water that came down with the bridge. Uh, I don't know about everyone on the ship, but uh, what a massive tragedy. It's going to take years to rebuild this bridge. And let me tell you something else. This is going to be a problem. Hazardous cargo, like uh, gasoline, tankers, gas, uh any hazardous cargo goes over this bridge and not through the tunnel. Tunnels, right. yeah. yeah, of course. There, you got the the the, the Chesapeake uh, uh, tunnel, the Chesapeake Bay tunnel, and they don't put the hazardous cargo through the tunnel. They have to take this bridge. This is gonna the consequences for the Baltimore area. This this is insane. And let me just take a minute and talk about just a couple of things that are just bizarre and, and weird. Now, this bridge collapse in Baltimore has a lot of similarities to what happened to the Skyway back in 1980. It was May 9th of 1980, and there was a a ship called the Summit Venture, and there was also a freighter. Got lost in the fog, smashed into the old Skyway, causing a collapse. 
you had 35 people die. 35 people died. Most were on board a Greyhound bus that was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and the bus went over into the water. Most of the deaths were on that bus. Only one person survived, a guy by the name of Wesley McIntyre. His truck fell onto the freighter's deck. He's driving across the old Skyway, 1980, and his truck fell onto the... Fr- he survived. God. Wasn't his dog in the truck, though? I remember reading that. Yeah, I, I can't remember. And that old bridge was demolished. You know, the fishing pier is... That was the runoff. Yeah, so the, the current fishing pier at the Skyway, that's the old approaches to the old Sunshine Skyway Bridge, which was demolished. Now, before we move on, let me just tell you something really weird. I don't know why. Sunday night, I was getting ready to go to bed. I'm in bed. Michelle's next to me. She's playing her little squirtle, wordle, whatever that little, you know, the little game is. Wordle. I yeah, play it every day. Yeah. I, I think she play. I don't know. Anyway. She so, plays a smarter person's game. So I'm going to bed, and I don't know what it was, but I opened my eyes. I grabbed my phone, and I was thinking about that bridge collapse. I don't know why it popped into my head, but I was. I thought of the bridge collapse that happened, I thought it was Pennsylvania, but it was West Virginia. The bridge that collapsed back in 1967, it was the old Silver Bridge. And the bridge had a structural problem. One of the like support chains uh, was broken. So the whole bridge collapsed and 46 people died. Wow. This is a bridge over the Ohio River from West Virginia into Ohio. And it was called the Silver Bridge. And I don't know why Sunday night this popped into my head and I grabbed my phone and I did a Google search because I remembered that there's this old legend of Mothman. You, you, hey, for all, you ever see the Mothman prophecies? Oh, please. The, no, I haven't seen that movie, but I know about the Mothman. No, but the Mothman... He's a creature. Well, a creature, which... Look, I, do a I, big winged red-eyed creature. Yes, exactly. Yeah, of course I know about Exactly. <laughs> so I... I don't believe in this crap. I do. But when the bridge collapsed over the Ohio River from West Virginia to Ohio in 1967, in the months prior, people were reporting seeing a seven-foot winged creature with, like, red eyes. And that's where the whole Mothman whole legend comes from. And for whatever reason, I thought of this on Sunday night about this bridge collapse. Wow. And then I was like, well, what are the bridges collapsed? And then I, I remembered the Skyway. And then I remembered that big chunk of bridge uh, in Minneapolis. Min- yeah, the uh, I-35. I Was it I- yeah, I-35 westbound? Whatever it was. Remember that massive chunk of bridge collapsed uh, in, uh, what was that, 2007? Yeah. And that was awful. You know what would have been crazy is if you talked about this yesterday on the show. Like, hey, I was just researching bridge collapses. But it was just an innocuous, you know, Right. Trivial thing is no, no reason to but, bring it up without this. Is a problem. Exactly. Right. But, I, but you could. I, you could have been like, yeah, I went down this rabbit hole last night, Michelle and I. I, I, I mean, then it would be out there. Like, then yeah. people would be going, didn't MJ just talk about this yesterday on the show? But there was no reason to bring it up. It was just right. something that I had done privately on Sunday night because suddenly the Mothman and the bridge collapse came in. I'm like, what, what, where was that bridge? And, you know, Richard Gere was in that movie. Uh, you, you, you'd think it would be a seven foot flying gerbil, but oh, it, but it was. <laughs> Couldn't think of a joke faster. The gerbil man. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of a joke. I right, know. Joke, joke, joke. Come on. Which that's that's not true. But I it's just strange, just totally weird. Well, you know what they say? Hmm. They say this is you want me for the kooky stuff, right? Full moons make you more intuitive. So it was a full moon yesterday. So maybe you were just having some like little premonition. Mm. Maybe. Hmm. The governor yesterday signed into law that bill banning kids under 14 from having social media accounts here in Florida. Now, is this enforceable? It It's really not uh, because any kid who's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, whatever, can go on a social media and make an account and just lie about their age. So... Do I agree with keeping young kids off of social media? Absolutely. Is social media a net negative for humanity? Absolutely. 
If I didn't need to use social media as an ancillary item and a support pillar and an interaction uh, uh, entity for this show, would I be on social media? I'm telling you right now, I would not. If I didn't need to be on social media, I've written off X. X is, you know, Twitter, X, that's a dumpster fire now. I haven't been on in, in months. I've been slowly deleting tweets. Uh, I, I'd like to just get rid of it. But um, so, you know, Instagram is my primary. Most of my Instagram pictures go on to uh, my Facebook. But Instagram is really the only thing that I actively do. And if I didn't have this show, would I be on Instagram? I wouldn't. I, don't, I, I would not be on any social media. So the update to the story is, is that Governor DeSantis signed the bill into law yesterday and it prohibits kids younger than 14 from joining social media here in Florida. If you are 14 or 15, you need parental consent before you join the platform. But again, you can just go on and lie about your age. So again, is this really enforceable? The bill which the governor signed is House Bill 3, also directs social media companies to delete the existing accounts of those who are under 14. So those that actually registered and put in their actual birth date uh, they would be compelled, and it'll be interesting to see, is uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, are all of uh, Snapchat, are these social media sites going to adhere to what Florida just passed and delete accounts for those that definitely are under 14 because they put their actual age? Companies that fail to do so uh, could be sued by the state of Florida on behalf of the child who creates the account on the platform, and then the minor, the underage kid, could be awarded up to $10,000 in damages, according to the Florida statute, which is now uh, signed into law by Governor DeSantis. Great. I want my state to sue more people. How'd that work for Disney, Governor? Yeah, the law does not go into effect until January of 2025. So, you know, still months away. January 1st of next year is when this actually goes into effect. But this is a big deal. This is a, a really big deal. But, you know, it's, I think it's more ceremonial. I just, I don't see how this is enforceable. So social media companies, they delete the accounts of kids that are verified to be under 14. So then they go back on and they just say they were born in 1977. All right. You know, or, or whatever. So... There you have it. What do we know about this maniac that was arrested with a machete at a Wawa here in Tampa? What's going on? This is the Wawa that I go to. I got a maniac with a... Uh, yeah. This is, this is the Wawa, which is just north of Kennedy. So South Tampa, Wawa between Kennedy and I-275. Didn't you see a car accident near there, too, and take video? Was oh, that, yeah. That, that was, was a, right there, right? A couple of years ago, there was a, a flip over, a rollover, car on its side, right at, is that Gray? Is that Gray Street? Might be Gray and Dale Mabry. Uh, there's a traffic light there. and I, Yeah, I saw a terrible crash there. Luckily, no one was injured, but a car was you know, going north. Car made a turn. T-boned. The car flipped over. Yeah, right there at the Wawa. Listen to this. One has been arrested. After a machete attack at Wawa. Happened over the weekend. Uh, somebody was injured. According to TPD, they were called to the Wawa at 401 Northdale Mabry. This was Sunday, about 6.15 in the evening. There was a fight between two men. And... Uh, Video that popped up on social media showed a guy with a machete outside a Wawa. Dude, can you just go get one of those delicious soft pretzels mm. and put the machete down, please? He's going to cut it in half. Go get yourself a, a smoothie at the, at the Wawa little touch screen. Yeah, so the video that's making the round shows like two guys, they're arguing. Uh, one guy says, hey, call the cops! And then... The guy has a machete, and you got, there's a child in a in a stroller. Kid in the stroller. You got dog, you got big, big dogs. You got 
dogs that are being... I mean, why does a guy have two, like, German Shepherd-looking things? Then you have, like, a poor I, man's macho man Randy Savage-looking dude standing he, in front of the yeah, door. He's, right. he's got, like, a Duck Dynasty beard with a bandana. He wants to I just mean, snap it to Then you got engines. a guy with a machete with an orange muscle shirt. It's like, Mike, ladies and gentlemen, it's Tampa right here at Wawa. <laughs> Send this video to the Chamber of Commerce. Let's... Guy pulls a machete on you, MJ. Let's run commercials. Jeez. You know how you know uh, you know uh, cities will advertise in other cities around the country to try to get tourists. Yeah. Let's let's take this video with a guy with dogs. We got mullets. We've got bandanas and beards. Guy with a machete uh, in a Wawa parking lot. Let's send this. Just run this as a thirty second commercial. I don't know if we could play this audio. Come to Tampa. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, so the cops obviously de- de-escalated it, and then uh, yeah, the, the guy with the machete apparently was arrested. That's well, a that- shooting, right? Uh, listen. You, you, if you so- come at me with a machete. Yeah, if you're caring, if you're just some dude filling up your car with uh, with uh, unleaded gas, yeah. and some guy comes up to you with a machete and he's swinging at you, yeah, that that's probably a justifiable shoot. If you feel your life is in danger, this is Florida. You got a guy, you know, with a bushwhacking machete just running around a Wawa parking lot. MJ, when you're doing your promotional video for Come get, Visit Florida, you've got the strip clubs right across the street, so that's the upside. You well, want... further north, further north, a further, yeah, north. further north. Yeah, strip clubs are uh, on the uh, a little north of uh, 275, but within walking yeah. distance yeah. of yeah. Machete Man. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. All right, you want to do Jack Wagon Jury? Sure. Do you have like a big introduction piece? No, not yet. This I mean, is still a working yeah. idea, Froggy. Yeah, I mean, we've been using... Now, it's time for the MJ Morning Show Jack Wagon Jury. Jury. Now, keep in mind, Froggy was not here for the impromptu Jack Wagon Jury on Friday. Nope. Now, Froggy was selling shelves at some convention in Houston. That's right, baby. Yeah, that's where you were. So... Let's go to the phones. And now, Froggy, you are officially a member of the Jack, Jack Wagon, Wagon Jury. Jury. And I don't sell shelves. I sell solutions. Uh, okay, Shel- shelving solutions. Go ahead. All right, let's go to the phones right now. Do you have a story where you need us, the Jack Wagon Jury, to give you a verdict on whether you're the Jack Wagon? Again, this all stemmed from the fight that I had a couple of weekends ago in Manhattan because a bartender half-assed making an old-fashioned for Michelle, and I called him out. Bartender flipped out, threw the glass, broke the glass because he made a a, a half-assed uh, old-fashioned. And then I asked you guys last week, hey, am I the jack wagon here? And that kind of started, hey, let's uh, do the jack wagon jury. All right, let's go. Let's hit the phones right now. 800-990-1047. Give us a story. What did you do? What happened to you? What were you involved with? Some kind of an incident, whether it's a brand new story, whether it was a story a couple of months back or a year, whatever. If you have a crazy story, something that happened, you have a scenario to tell us, then we, the the jury, uh, me, Roxanne, Fester, now Froggy, we're going to decide whether you are the jack wagon. So tell us your story. Hey, and you know what? Also, it could be a, a story that you're aware of. It could be a story of a, a friend, a relative, a coworker. I don't know. So, listen, for, I want firsthand jack wagons. Yeah, for the most part, we should get firsthand jack wagon uh, jury stories. So if you have a story to tell and you want us to determine whether you're the jack wagon call us right now enter the courtroom for the mj morning show jack wagon jury at 800-990-1047 that's 800-990-1047 so it's listen it's it's a simple process uh, you you just ask us. Hey, you get a, a, a whole second set of eyes and ears on your story, something that you did, something that that happened, and ask us, "Am I the jack wagon?" And we'll give you the verdict. Hey, yep, you were the jack wagon in this scenario, or nope, you're free and clear. You're not the jack wagon. So Andrew is screening calls right now, and 
listen, we, we did this impromptu on Friday and the phones blew up and we had actually had, you know, pretty good stories on Friday. All right, so Andrew has uh, calls already going on hold, so let us go to the the phone lines and start with Ron in Largo. Ron, welcome to the Jack Wagon Jury. Morning, everyone. Uh, this is related to a hospital. Uh, our daughter, we had to take her to emergency room last month. Yep. So we went to we went to hospital in Largo. And they took her in, even though they weren't a pediatric hospital. Okay. Fifteen. And first they assessed it to be one thing, and the test results turned out not to be that. And they were going to transfer us over to all children. Right. They said, once we get to all children, just give them our paperwork. After being at Largo for four hours, go over there, hand them the paperwork. We've already talked to the doctors. You'll bypass the waiting room, right to the room, and we get to all children's, and they take our name right. and say, have a seat in the waiting room. We'll get to you when we can. I explained to them that that's not what we were told at Largo Hospital. Why am I getting a different story here? She's having difficulty breathing yep. and everything, and basically we ended up sitting. You know, I, I was not very happy at, at the response and was elevating my voice, of course, uh -oh. the, the frustration of it. I actually called back Largo Hospital and asked them why they gave me this information, put them on the phone with all children right. hospital. Okay. They still said we take it case by case, even if they brought her in an ambulance over instead of us bringing her. She still has to wait in the waiting room. I said, so if I paid the fee for the ambulance ride, that would have gotten her in the back room. I said, I'm not understanding it. Anyways, we ended up waiting two more hours in the waiting room. And, yeah, she was admitted to the hospital for five. She was there for five days. Oh, wow. I, the guy was like. When you arrived at the hospital, let me let me ask some questions here to yes. help me with my verdict as a jury member of the Jack Wagon jury. Was your child in any imminent danger or immediate distress that needed immediate uh, cuz they prioritize you know in emergency rooms well she she was she had sinus she couldn't breathe through her nose right only means of being able to breathe is through her throat and her throat was 90% swollen blockage oh, wow. very very diff, you know she was short of breath at times you know, and as a father, you know, looking looking at your child suffering and then being told, sorry, that they gave you the wrong information. This is how we do it here. I don't know how they do it at Largo. I called All them. right, so you want to know, are you the jack wagon for losing your temper in the all-children's emergency room? Yes. All right. With the facts that we have, Fester. Yeah. Is Ron in Largo the jack wagon? So while you're obviously a very concerned and loving father, you are the jack wagon. Yeah. You oh are. boy. Yeah. All right. Uh, you are. I mean, they got to you in a couple within a couple of hours. Your daughter was not in any. She was having difficulty breathing, but she yeah, wasn't. But when you're, it the, wasn't super. Yeah. When you're the parent, but you, he's you don't super close. Yeah, he's I too know. close to the situation. Yeah, yeah but that's yeah. your daughter. That's he, what you do. Yeah, you he's get too to close that. to the situation. Yeah, all right. But yeah, you're a jack uh, wagon. Okay, all right. A loving father, jack wagon. Right. But you're still one. Froggy, what is your verdict in the jack wagon jury? Uh, he, he took so long that I, I, I sort of tuned out halfway through. Uh, that's that's a oh, great. I'm a horrible juror. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't right, even know. We're, we're, we're going to have to dismiss Froggy and, <laughs> no, and, 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 and go, go with the alternate juror. I just Roxanne first. Yeah, which is, okay, a, uh, which, which is a, a printer. He just was a long-winded fella. Run. Yeah. We're going to have to go with the alternate juror, which is a, the trash can right here. Yeah, Jeez right, right. Louise. Ron, yeah, this, did this, you, is, this is our alternate juror right I there. just think to get to the story a little quicker. Ron, it did was like you... molasses. <laughs> Ron, did you break anything in the waiting room? Did you break anything? Hello? I might have broken the guy's feelings behind the desk. Okay, did you, did you physically uh, assault anyone? 
No, I didn't. Okay, you're your hero. Anyone, but... Your hero. Your child uh, can't breathe. You're stressed out. You were told one thing. We know the doctors and nurses are doing their best, but you're dealing with all this bureaucracy. I think you, you're. I think you're a hero. Not only are you not a jack wagon, you're sticking up for your child and and being an advocate for for your child. So, no. Nope. All right. So my turn here. Again, with the facts that I have, I would also have to say that you are not the jack wagon if it took a long time your child was having difficulty but listen you don't know if they were jammed with uh, higher priority emergencies behind the doors in the ER so uh, with what I know though I will say that yes you are a very concerned father Ron and you are not the jack wagon okay I agree (laughs) <laughs> Froggy, will you, yes. will you stop it? Not the jack wagon. All right. Thank you, Ron. Have a good day. You, you've been exonerated. Thank you for the verdict. All right. Work on your story, look, Pacey. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, just put a little pepper on it, Ron. <laughs> uh, put a little stank in your step there, <laughs> Annie. Alex, I want one more here. Alex is in Brooklyn. I got a lot of stuff. We got to get into the whole P. Diddy situation. Also, there's a restaurant. There's a restaurant that is allegedly now the hottest date spot. I, I I don't I don't understand this in Tampa. Well, well, there is one in Tampa. Okay, but they have them around the country. Uh, hold on, I'll explain in a minute. Uh, Alex in Brooksville. Alex, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Uh, Andrew says that you're not sure whether this fits the Jack Wagon jury. Uh, right. Well, it's Alec with the K. Sorry. Oh, yeah. He's got Alex, A L E X. So you're yeah. Alec, yeah, that, like, like a smart Alec. Yeah, that mistake admit. never happened before. Okay. That's right. All right. Go yeah. ahead, Alec. Um, well, uh, January 28th, I was at Brooksville um, Lowe's Home Improvement Store. Yep. I heard of that. You know, picking up a couple of things. And uh, um, so I'm walking down the aisle, and all of a sudden, this big black uh, uh, dog um, jumped on me, grabbed me by the leg, wouldn't let go. And I'm bleeding, and my pants are ripped and everything, and the lady's trying to pull the dog. But anyway, they pulled the dog away. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Froggy, why are you la- Why are you I'm laughing? I'm just imagining if I saw something. Why, why are you, this guy's attacked by a dog uh, in aisle 16 at Lowe's in Brooksville, and you're laughing? I mean, I'm right, the visual. First, first of all, Alec, why was there a big black dog in Lowe's? Um, there was a lady uh, that brought her dog in. Uh, it wasn't a service dog. It was a yeah. That was my next. Que- that was my next question. It was what? What kind of dog? Uh, Rottweiler is that what they call it? Oh, yeah. 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 oh yeah, it was dog. a, a Rottweiler. Could be ferocious. Yeah. So it was not a service dog. This was just the lady's pet, and she's cruising Lowe's with her Rottweiler. Yes, and um, uh, again, I was just passing by to go to the register to pay for my stuff. My wife's outside waiting in the car. Oh, yeah. I didn't have my phone or anything with me, so I could take a picture or whatever. So I'm standing there bleeding, and nobody does anything. So I started yelling, screaming at the uh, workers looking at me. I said, can you call the manager to, to you know, fill out a report or something? I didn't call the cops or anything. Yeah, you should see. All right, now, you, you should have called the cops. All right, go ahead. So the, the manager comes out? I, well, biggest mistake, like I said, I didn't have my phone with me. It was in the car. Yeah, oh. the manager finally comes over, and she said, um, okay, uh, what happened? I said, oh, what happened? Did this dog bit me. Look, I'm bleeding here. Um, you know, can you get information from her and all that? They took uh, the lady away from me on the other side of the aisle, and they took information from her and from me. And then, uh, the man- then another manager came, and he said to me, uh, why don't you just go to the hospital right now, take care of all this, and I'll take care of it. I paid from this right here store. You don't have to go through anything. Just right here. We'll pay you. We'll buy you brand new pants. I said, okay. <laughs> so I, I, up from there, I went to the urgent care, um, you know, got like a couple shots they gave me, whatever. And, oh, yeah. And, Jeez, um, yeah. And then the manager called me like an hour later. He goes, here's a claim number. And uh, you can call this number and then they'll take it. I, I said, you told me to bring the receipts to you. I got um, you know, like two hundred dollars right now with uh, you know hospital. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. He said, "Oh no, no, that's not what I said." I said, "We're going to give you a claim number." I said, "You mentioned the store." I said, "Okay, it doesn't matter. Give me the claim number." He did, and then I, and then all of a sudden, five days later, I'm still calling over there. I'm trying to find out because everybody's telling me. You're going to die because, you, you know, the dog had a rabies or they're hiding the dog. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. right. Let, uh, Alec, Alec, yes. hang on. Listen, I've got enough information. I have two I, questions, though, for you. First of all, how is your leg? 
How are you now? Uh, it's healing now. I still got a scar. It's healing and everything. But now Lowe's is not paying anything. I send them uh, $2,000 bills from Hernando County. Son of a... Okay. All right. Another now. question for you oh, real hold on. quick. So, hold on. You, ra- you had to get a rabies shot at the at the Hernando County Health Department? Yes. They called me like if five days later, and they, somehow they found out from the hospital. Like, they said, hey, you need to come here now. Get the shots. Oh, my God. All right. All right, all right listen. All right, wait, listen. Wait, wait, wait. But, I, MJ, listen. I, I, Allie, hang on Do second. you have the, the lady's contact info? That's that's the next question. That's what no, I was going to ask. They Do, wouldn't give it to me. No, that's you, no, a right, problem. See, see that... Uh, all right, let, let you me need to call a lawyer. Right, let, let, well, yeah, absolutely. All right, <laughs> let me let me tell you right now, dude. You got to get an attorney. You know, in fact, I'll uh, I call I'll, some Kemp Rouge hey, Green. I call some Kemp no, no, it, for you. I'll hook you up with Stacy yeah, Kemp. Yeah, we'll get Seriously, you going. This, name right, bro. this is a this is a well, formerly Kemp Rouge and Green. Now the Kemp Law Group, the, dude. Get let, Rouge let, on this chop let, chop. Let me tell you right now that. You need uh, so you got to bring your phone in, man. Uh, you should have called nine one one from the aisle right after the attack. Hello, nine one one. Send the police. I've just been attacked by a dog. Send police, fire, rescue. Because again, you have to get the name of the woman. You that dog needs to be tested. That dog needs to prove that it's up to date on its inoculations, yeah. rabies vaccines. So, Alec, listen, I don't want to, I, I don't want to make you feel bad here, but you needed yeah. to. It's like at the scene of the accident. You, you got to uh, prioritize, and you got to make sure. Let's say uh, you have an accident. You get the cops. If it's not your fault, you know certainly get the cops there to yeah. protect your best interests. You certainly so, need to be I've never better. Been in the situation like this. Oh yeah, listen, I, I hear you. But what you should have done is, uh, I wish you had your phone. You immediately call nine one one. You get the cops. You get uh, emergency response out there to treat your injury. Then you have a police report. So you have the whole thing because, dude, uh, Alec. You have you've got a case here, man. You obviously, if you were bitten by a freaking Rottweiler that was inside yeah. Lowe's, that was not a service animal, you have a claim against the woman whose dog bit you, and then you also have a claim against Lowe's for you know me, a, a lawyer is going to say that Lowe's should not have permitted the dog in the store if it was not uh, a trained service animal. Let me tell you quick. I know you mentioned the attorneys. I called Christopher Liguori, yep. and uh, they took my case uh, for a week, and they come back a week later. They go, sorry, we can't help you. There's no liability, something like that. Yeah, keep and calling like, right. around. And, and, and listen, uh, you know, he's a well-known attorney. I, I, just, I just saw him recently yeah. at, at an event. They he, just, he you know, he, he's, a, he's a well-known uh, attorney. Uh, you know, uh, Sometimes attorneys have conflicts of interest yeah. where they can't represent somebody. Uh, uh, listen, I'll tell you what, Alec. Uh, We'll put you on hold now. We'll get your number and we'll pass it along to Stacy Kemp from the Kemp Law Group. She's an advertiser on the show. Uh, she's been a longtime advertiser, and uh, we'll we'll have uh, the the Kemp Law Group get a hold of you. Okay. All right, and see. That's all I want is to uh, for them to pay the bills. The well, hospital. Listen, so that's all. Well, also maybe a couple hundred grand wouldn't hurt. I mean, Alec, you got you got to raise your uh, horizons a little bit on this. You're you're looking at some. Uh, Serious scratch hole. Oh yeah, you're gonna be I driving a Bentley like, before you know it. I feel like I I'm left out here. Nobody cares. And no, 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 out. no. You're, you yeah. got a, you got a Bentley in your future. You, you are not the best advocate for yourself at the time. I'll yeah. tell you that. You yeah. could have gotten more information. <laughs> so you're kind of the jack I know, wagon. I, I love. I learned. You yeah, are but the jack wagon. You know wagon. what? What are you at that moment in time? You're in shock. No, nope, you're not making wagon. a clear well, decision. I, I, Alec, get Alec, I was care of. terrified. I, right? Listen, I get it, Alec. Listen. So here's the verdict. You're not the jack wagon for being innocently attacked by a dog inside a Lowe's in Brooksville. However, it's not uh, his fault. His leg is so delicious. Right. <laughs> Did you have like kibbles and bits in your in your pocket or something? Yeah, or it's like Slim Jim. He had yeah. sausages. Yeah. Sausages. Yeah. yeah. He had sausages, sausages yeah. in his pocket. All right. So here's I the deal, Alec. Anything. You're 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 not the jack wagon for the obvious reasons. You're the jack wagon for not calling 911 and getting the cops out there to get a police report. That's it. All right, Alec, hold on. We'll get your information, and we'll pass it along to uh, our friends at the Kemp Law Group. Okay, thank you, guys. All right. So they got to change their slogan at Kemp. So Kemp Law Group is accident or fall. You call Kemp Law? Right. It's accident or fall, or if you're attacked by a Rottweiler in aisle 16 at Lowe's, call Kemp Law. Kind of flows, doesn't it? You know, it? it's not too wordy yeah. at all. No, no, I yeah. think it flows nicely. Yeah. All right, so yeah, I, I, so that's nice. a that's a crazy story. That's nuts. All right, moving along. 
I like the jack wagon jury. Is that it? Two of them? Yeah, that's what two I, today. I, yeah, we did like yeah, oh, three okay. or four yeah, the other day. Yeah, that, that two's good. I feel that's that's a good ending point right there. And you know what's interesting is you started this whole thing with Jack. Essentially, it was about your old fashioned. What what spawned this? Yeah. Jack wagon is your issue with your old fashioned, which some people make with Jack. Look at that! Wow. How it all wow. ties, it ties together. together. Like, it ties uh, together. Look at that! All right, so which? Restaurant in America is a le- This sounds like it's a PR stunt. Like this is being planted. I don't know if I'd buy this. That you're, you're gonna you're gonna love this. Is there one of them in no, town, or is there a bunch of them? There's one that I know of in town, and they're scattered all around the country. So I was gonna guess like Burger King or something, but that's not. No, it no, it's not. It's not fast food. Okay, all right. No, oh. it's not. It's not QSR. It's not quick serve. It's this is a, a sit down restaurant, but it's a chain, and there are many scattered ar- around the country. But they're not like on every corner or anything. Usually, a city has one of these. And now it's being said that this is the new hot dating spot that socialite Kathy Hilton was spotted. Ooh. Yep. Whoa. Uh, Hoda Kotby. Ooh. From I'm Hoda. Hoda. Hoda Kotby from the Today Show. Hoda, Hoda Kotby. Excuse me. I mean, work in a couple more vowels? Is that <laughs> what we need? A couple more vowels? So Kotby. in the last month, you have... Well-known individuals from uh, the socialite Kathy Hilton to media celebrity Hoda Kotb from the third hour of the Today Show. Wow, from, we're at the top of the A-list now. From, from, from saying the most that, irrelevant hour of that, the Today Show. That this restaurant chain is now a top spot for romantic nights. Then, wait a minute, don't answer yet. Then Kanye West, that maniac... What's what's wrong with him? Oh, he's a right. genius. So Kanye West and his wife, who d- wears like not have you ever seen the outfits she goes out in? She doesn't even wear clothes. They're yeah. all like you can see all of her body. <laughs> oh, I it's mean, crazy. I mean, it is the nuttiest. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Mm-hmm. Look at me. It is the biggest attention grab that I've ever seen. Yeah, she's exquisite. With. with uh, not really. No, she's a she's a pretty lady. <laughs> I mean, have you seen Kanye's teeth? I think they're looking for attention. Yeah, uh, Bianca you, Sensori. That's her name. Uh, what's her name? Bianca. Yeah, Bianca Sensori. Yeah. And man, there are pictures of her recently where she walks out, and it's like she's got two, uh, like pieces of electrical tape over her nipples, and like everything else is complete. She goes out wearing almost nothing. It's the it's the most ostentatious like attention grab. It's a good look with the Kanye and this <laughs> uh, this wife of his. All right. Did you know? She, I'm sorry. You, do you know she was an architect? I did not. Yeah. Well, she, <laughs> now look at her. <laughs> she used to design more clothes. <laughs> yeah, right. that's what you need to do for Vandalay Industries, right? right? So, <laughs> what restaurant chain is apparently this new hot dating spot? And I, I, do you agree or disagree? Once I reveal, do you have any idea? Nope. Um, I mean, which, it, which which restaurant? It's a restaurant chain. Come on, I've not uh, been there in years. They're known for like their uh, dishes that have like thirty eight thousand calories and uh, a year supply of salt. Oh, Piccadilly Cafeteria and, and fat. Is no, it, what? No, okay. So Ryan's only, Steakhouse. What? Ryan's have cl- they're closed. No, no. Uh, uh, you said there's one here. You said. yeah. Okay. So, is it like the Cheesecake Factory? Yes! Oh. Yes! Okay. Of course you know. No, of course I know, because I was there like six weeks ago. Yeah. It's it's the Cheesecake Factory, and apparently... Hasn't that always kind of been a popular dating I spot? I don't know, but of late... It's a family spot. Of late, a page six is pointing out that the hottest spot now for for date night is the Cheesecake Factory, and I... I guess out of nowhere, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think of it as a family spot here in Tampa, but I remember the first time I went to one in Chicago, and I, it was my first Cheesecake Factory experience, and Fester, like you, I was like, this is this is date night worthy. It was like hip and happening. Dude, MJ, remember we went to the Cheesecake Factory in Chicago? I love that the one. The day before 
Oh, Jerry Springer? Or uh, Jenny, um, Jones, uh, Jenny Jones, rather. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, Cheesecake Factory is a... Uh... You're in Chicago and you go to the Cheesecake Factory? Uh, we didn't know better. At the MJ. Time. <laughs> I mean, we didn't know. I was outvoted. How many years ago was that? Uh, 20. Yeah. yeah maybe, so, maybe more. Okay. It's been so, a while ago. Yeah. But, MJ, listen, it's it's always... It's, it, that place has happened. You go there, International Plaza, you go on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. It's jammed? There's a bunch of morons sitting out there waiting 45 <laughs> minutes to an hour and a half for a table. And why is there always, like, Ferraris out front of that place? I don't get that. I, I, I think that's them. probably for the Capitol Grill or maybe some of the bars. No, I'm pretty sure it's for Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Parker up front, I'm getting the new cheesecake. <laughs> I'm getting the Oreo cheesecake. Park, park my Ferrari out front. Listen, I, I'm not... I'm you not put a, a scratch in this Ferrari. I'm not a big patron of the Cheesecake Factory. Listen, mm. if it's your thing, mm. then you enjoy to each their own. I'm just, uh, you know... It's a good place. Well, also, you go to the Cheesecake Factory where I have not been for... I haven't been to the Cheesecake Factory in probably 15 years. It's been a long, long time. You should go. But also, the menu takes you nine months to go through. I mean, how could they possibly make all that? How do they know how to make all that crap in the kitchen when you've got 17,000 items on the menu? The menu is, yeah, thick. I, I mean, come on. All right, but apparently, listen, on a positive sense... The claim is is that the Cheesecake Factory is now one of the hottest date spots or romantic evenings out. I, I, Listen, you don't hear about too many people having bad meals there. I mean, everything they serve is probably pretty good. Yeah, listen, I don't know a lot. I know that some of the, like, <laughs> every year, the like the consumer food groups, they have the list of, like, the foods that have Look. the most fat, most sodium, most calories. And I know when those lists come out and they... Uh, reveal which restaurant chains have you know dishes with the most calories, most fat, most sodium. I know that. Listen, Cheesecake Factory, they're, they're going to have some healthy options as well. But I know that Cheesecake Factory always seems to land on that list. Listen, if you order the Cheesecake Factory fettuccine Alfredo <laughs> and then you wash it down with strawberry cheesecake, guess what? It's like five thousand calories between oh, the two. It's like it's like the whole week's worth of yeah. calories, and it's a month's worth of sodium and fat. Mm-hmm. Do you guys know <laughs> where the name Cheesecake Factory was first came from? Yeah, a factory that makes cheesecake. Oh, I don't know. I'll just ask. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you guys knew. Knew the origins. Huh? They sell cheesecake there, you know. Oh, I've been. There's lots of good cheesecake. Oh, boy. The uh, lines what, are always. <laughs> what, what do you make out of this P. Diddy thing? Do you think that there is absolute smoke and there's some serious freaking fire? All right, let me put it this way. Is Sean Diddy Combs or Puff Daddy P. Diddy? I don't even know what he goes by these days. But is he going to federal prison? I mean, this is serious stuff. You know, Sean Diddy Combs had his Beverly Hills, Los Angeles area home raided by the feds. His Miami home was raided by the feds. You know they did simultaneous raids. So they can't call one one person at one house, can't call the other house and that, warn them. That's why they do it. So it was coordinated by Coastal Homeland Security. This is like Department of Homeland Security raided simultaneously I mean, they must have been, like, on the phone coordinating. All right, all right ready? Okay, here we go. Not yet. Not yet. I'm not, not ready yet. yet. I'm not ready yet. Sir, serve the ward. Get, battering ram. Bash in the door. Are you ready to go? No, L- no. L- Miami Homeland Security. Be- Beverly ready. Hills, are you not, ready? No, wait, guys, Beverly. wait. There's Beverly something in my shoe. Not yet. Miami, I pee. Miami, you ready? Oh, no. Here we go. I got to be nervous. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Guys, I'm going to puke. In five. Five. Four. Oh, God, I'm nervous. Three. I'm scared. Two. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I can't do this. I'm so nervous. I'm such a big fan. I need a new career. What if he's in there, Mr. Diddy? I can't do it. Sarge, I quit. I have no a faith. bad boy for life. <laughs> right, listen, we got we got to service warrant. You ready? All right, let's go. Three, let's go. Let's go. Two, two one. Mr. Diddy, put him up. Put him down. 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 Search warrant. Hold on, security. Federal, hey, federal agents. Put your hands where I can see them. Federal agents. Everyone, hands up. We they, ain't going no one no. Where? What? That boy for life? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm uh, saying okay. it. I mean, I'm a big yeah. fan. Hey, mm-hmm. uh, was it like, was it Diddy's son? Did they toss yeah. the house? I mean, what do they do? Oh, yeah. Justin and King were seen in handcuffs. Yeah, in, in Miami, yes, right? Yes, exactly. At, at the it's, Miami house, you had Why Did- were they in cuffs? That's the question. Hey, you got to secure the location, man. You don't know what's going on. You don't need someone to grab like a Mac-10 or something. Yeah. You know, start spraying the play. Listen. Like, you've never been in cuffs, Froggy. All right. <laughs> 
So where's P. Diddy? Well, that was a whole other controversy. He's in his bunker. Well, so. listen, there was a there was a rumor, there was a story that came out that he was fleeing the country yesterday, and he was like flying to the Bahamas, but then he was seen back at the Opalaka Airport near Miami. Yeah, Miami Opalaka Executive Center. Yeah, so he ended up back there, but for a couple of hours uh, surrounding the news of the raid, there was a report that P. Diddy was fleeing the country, which turned out not to be true. This is what we know. That his homes in L.A., Beverly Hills, and Miami were raided by the Department of Homeland Security, HSI, Homeland Security Investigations, uh, and other law enforcement agencies due to a possible ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, New York, executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles and HSI Miami. What what's up with all this sex trafficking going on? I don't understand. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's like I mean, the Vince McMahon stuff, P Diddy. I mean, and the what's the other guy? Uh, Epstein. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> <It's a lot. laughs> and then the other guy, it's a real Harvey random, Weinstein. That was a while ago. It's a real random yeah. assortment of characters you have here for. But it still it's, it seems like it's popping up more often these days. Well, Investigators were still at Combs's Miami Beach home late into the night last night, according to CBS. Channel 4 down in Miami. Uh, Combs was not at the Miami Beach location when the search occurred. Uh, Combs uh, has faced several uh, sexual assault allegations So in the last couple of months. So some of the details. In the last couple of months, you've had uh, Sean Diddy Combs accused of rape and sexual assault by at least four women. And this goes back to November. So since November, four women have accused him of rape or sexual assault. And these charges go way back, or uh, accusations go back to like the 90s. One of them, yeah. at least as far back as 1990s. The sex trafficking investigation, you know, involving uh, uh, he and, and Bad Boy Records, you know, his record company. Uh, former girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, she sued Combs last November claiming sexual abuse. And that thing was settled quickly. Remember that? Yeah. So I don't know how much she walked away with, but I'm sure they paid her millions of dollars to go away. So can he do that with these two? Well, just, just pay them off? No, no, no. Well, some know. some of the other women that have made allegations, yeah, you can try to settle with them if they're going to go after him civilly, but you've got some criminal complaints mm -hmm. and now clearly the investigation criminally has led to the search warrants and the doors being kicked in. At uh, you know Sean Combs Diddy's houses in uh, L.A. and and Miami. Didn't we have a story a couple of weeks ago about a a, a male rapper named Little Rod? Rodney Jones. All right. So Little, Little Rod was well, his well, hang on. name. But one of his producers is Rodney Jones. Right. And Rodney Jones also claims that for over a year that Diddy drugged him and sexually abused him and sexually harassed him while he was working on Diddy's latest album. So, I mean, this this was not CSI Miami. This was HSI Miami. Good one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't have a zinger, though. Now, Puff Daddy was uh, reached for comment about the raids federal agents raiding his two homes, and this is what Diddy had to say. I'm shocked at this information. There wow. we go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't be too shocked, Diddy. <laughs> you watch the news. So what kind of goods do they have on him, and is it possible that Sean P. Diddy Combs could end up like R. Kelly, you know, locked away for 30 years? It just seems like people are creepy. Do you remember yeah. that audio bite? I can't find it. I had Andrew look for it. Puff it, Daddy and his 57 names? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> that was the title that, of it. Oh, it was. <laughs> hey, uh, Andrew, see if that's in there. Puff Daddy and his 57 names. I, I don't know if we got that transferred into the system. I'm sure it's on my old hard drive. But for all you do, can you try to recreate that, that oh my sound God, bite? It's, it's tough. Uh, no, I can't. Come on. I well, just well, remember playing well, it all the time. Describe it. Describe well, it's it. Puff Daddy being interviewed about his new name. I think that's when he went from... 
Puff Daddy to P Diddy, maybe? Right, to Diddy, yep. to P Diddy, to... And he's like, and he's like, yeah, this is your second name. He's like, I got more than two names. I got Puff Daddy. But I he got said, P. like, Diddy. when I'm a record producer... Oh, that's uh, it. Uh, he went through When a I'm whole, a dad, I'm Sean. When I'm a record producer, I'm Diddy. When, when I'm, I'm sexual a- trafficking, I'm <laughs> Sean Combs. I mean... What? In federal indictments, <laughs> my name is Sean. Yeah, Cole. that's it. Government you got name. it right. Yeah. He he gives a bunch of his names. Interesting. But it sounds like he's in a bunch of trouble. Oh, uh, TMZ or pay, one of the gossip uh, uh, operations, they they uh, asked 50 Cent for his uh, comment. Oh. And 50 Cent said, hey, man, that bleep just got real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, well, he's the one coming out with a documentary, right? Or is that still a thing? He's going to have a documentary on Diddy because they've had beef for many years. Well, all right. Let me lighten around a bunch of stuff here on the MJ Morning Show. 832. We're in the middle of an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ. We hope you enjoy it every single day. Nonstop for over an hour and 20 minutes. And, of course, please spread the word. Tell everyone you know you listen to the MJ Morning Show. Tell them why you like the show. If they don't listen to us, tell them why Tell them why they should listen to the show. And, you know, when I run into people or I hear about new listeners, you know, I hear that, you know, I, I listened for the first time. I was hooked. You know, if you know anyone that doesn't listen to the show, just t- tell them to give us a shot one morning. Because a, a lot of people obviously know who we are. We've been in the market for a long, long time. but with the new population here in Tampa Bay, we've had hundreds of thousands of new people come in that maybe are not familiar with the history of the MJ Morning Show. So whatever you can do to introduce us to anyone you know that doesn't listen, highly appreciated. And then also remember, when you get to work, whether it's 8.30, 8.45, 9 o'clock, take us into work with you. Listen on your smartphone We're on all the apps. You can listen to uh, Q105 Tampa Bay streaming live on your phone, live on your computer, smart speakers. So make sure you bring us into the office with you when you get there. Have a follow-up. Do you remember the story we did about uh, the Reddit group? Uh, I'm sorry, the Facebook group. Are we dating the same guy? Remember? Yeah. Remember we've had two stories now within a couple of months of guys that are suing women because they were criticizing them on the Facebook group, Are We Dating the Same Guy? Didn't we talk about that Friday? We talked about it, I believe, on Friday's show. And we had an an update on a new story about a guy suing a whole bunch of women because they were talking about him on the Facebook page, you know, the group, Are We Dating the Same Guy? So I get an email from Amy, and Amy writes, I'm on that website. Women share creepy texts guys send in apps, inappropriate behavior, etc. Not every guy gets a bad review. If you are on dating apps, you want to know if you're wasting your time, so you post a guy and ask if anyone has dated them. Some guys get good reviews and others, not so much. Guys have nothing to worry about if they just act like a gentleman. So, Amy, thanks for the follow-up on this. I appreciate it. So, you know, there's a, remember, didn't we take a call? or Because we found out there is a Tampa group. Yeah, I found it through searching on Facebook. Or did did we get a call on it or you found it? I just typed in, are we dating the same guy? And there's different groups for different cities. Tampa has one. I did not ask to become a member, although, you know, I've dated a few guys. There was a situation. Oh, really? Just you, Frog. There's a situation going on in my house, and it's been going on for a long time. There is something that I do that just absolutely pisses Michelle off. It's not when you take your shirt off, is it? No. It's not when you take your pants off, is it? No. Oh, it's not no. when you take your underwear off, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we stop. People are eating breakfast, we frog. We stop. It's not it. funny. No, there's something that I've done. I don't know why I do this, but I've done this for years, and I think Michelle's at the breaking point. She yells at me. Oh, no. Chew your mouth <laughs> open. Oh, is it when you say whelp? What? No. Whelp. I brought in the items that are the offenders. 
Okay. Are you ready? You ready to see what they are? Yeah. Michelle hates these. I'm going to hold them up to MJ TV. I'm going to show you guys. Then I'll tell those that can't see it on MJ TV. I'll tell you in a second exactly what these are. I brought in two of these. Do you know what these are? They're tags of some sort. She hates it when I do this. I oh, don't... tear them off? Oh, all right. Well, so what? Let me hold this close to MJ TV. Got two of them here. Is that a is that a skew on a fruit? Yes. Yes. I don't eat much fruit. Yes. But, but like they put them on like apples. Yes. Or pears? Apples. So I love pink lady apples. My favorite apple is a delicious, crisp pink lady apple. And you leave the tag around. Well, no, well, you, yeah. You eat around the tag? No, 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 no. 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 Hold, 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 let me let me explain. You eat the paper? Well, I, the the crap that happens in my house. No, I don't. Listen. So the pink lady apple is the best. When you get a fresh one or ones that have been stored properly in nitrogen for months at a time, when you when you get a great pink lady, they should be absolutely crisp. No mealiness. Oh, I just like squishy, mm-hmm. squishy, oh, yeah. nasty blueberries that don't have a crunch and a snap. I I hate like mushy blueberries. Same thing with apples. A mealy soft apple sucks. I find the mealy apples the oh. most disp- offensive. Oh, the, this disgusting bad belief. But you get a good crisp pink lady. It's sweet and tart. It has a bite and a tang. Love it. So I'm a big pink lady fan, right? I like Frenchie. She's my uh, favorite. Now. <laughs> I'm holding this up to MJ TV again. This is the little skew and also the the indicator, or it shows you, it says pink lady on there. So you know it's with all the apples, you get the sticker on there. So, you know, if, if you get some some Macintoshes or some honey crisps that get mixed up with the pink, you know, you know the the apples typically have the little stickers on there. And I don't know why I started doing this, but when I wash the apple, I'll just like take the sticker and I'll stick it on like the sink faucet or I'll stick it on the countertop. And Michelle goes ballistic. It's the apple sticker situation. So this <sighs> is, I guess, finally, the, the it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. Uh, she's threatened to leave me now. <laughs> no. Over apples. Over apple <laughs> stickers. Over those little but, apple stickers, a little skews, yeah. But you know when you we've, yeah. you fight with a woman, it's never just about the apple stickers. It's the pile of things. It's the straw, like you said. Andrew, I just said where I, Andrew uh, wanted to know where am I leaving. I'll put them on the sink faucet because I just I rinsed off the apple, so I'll take the sticker off and put it on the sink and just kind of leave it there, or put it on the the countertop. Hello. Are you listening? No, I was in Chloe's room. Okay. Um. I'm talking about uh, apparently after th- nearly 30 years of marriage, the thing that bothers you the absolute most, you're threatening divorce at this point. You've read me the riot act, but I think, and I've done this for years, but no, it's. No, you haven't. Yes, I you have. Things that you do now that you haven't done for years, that's a lie. Say it again. That's a lie. You've done, you have not done these things for 30 years. That's a lie. No, no, I didn't say 30. I didn't say 30 years. I said I've done it for years. Yeah, no, I heard thirty. I, I no, no I did, for all, you stop it. I never said thirty. Michelle, Michelle, mm. in the evolution. Hold on, Michelle. Do you know what we're talking about? I just walked as I walked in the room. I heard you say something about stickers. So I'm going to guess it's putting those stupid Apple stickers yeah, all over the right. counter in the kitchen. Listen, <laughs> Michelle, in the right. in the evolution of MJ's annoyingness, <laughs> and it's evolved over the decades. But in the evolution of his annoyingness, how long has he been putting Apple stickers on faucets or countertops? I or- just noticed it, uh, like. Seven or eight years ago, <laughs> right? It's been a uh-huh. while. It's been it just crazy. a short, a short seven or eight years ago. You've been holding no, no, no. this for no, a no, while. No, no. It wasn't seven or eight years ago. It, I did not notice it until um, until we were in the brownstone. So that would have been, and actually, it was like right during COVID when we got the apples and they had the stickers on them, and we were eating apples like crazy. All of a sudden, those stickers started appearing everywhere in the kitchen. So, and I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, this, I never noticed that. This but you month, know what? You're going to get those stickers on you, and you're not going to be able to get them off. I'm going to super glue them to your butt. <laughs> Michelle, this month, you know, kind of with St. Patrick's Day being a few weeks ago, is kind of the ceremonial fourth anniversary of 
the COVID shutdowns and lockdowns. So mm. yeah. four years might yeah. be an accurate barometer for how long he's been doing yeah, this? There you go. That's that's about right. Thank you, Fester. Thank you for keeping a chronological account of his, you know, hey. awkward weirdness with these stickers. Uh, Michelle, here. really, aren't there more important things to worry about than a couple of stickers occasionally on the faucet in the kitchen? It's every day, and it's multiple stickers, and somebody has to go peel them off and put them in the trash can. I'd like to eat an apple a day, you know, because it... How many- I don't even understand what what makes somebody want to take the sticker off the fruit and put it on the counter. Yeah, what are you Why doing? Are you celebrating? He's too lazy to throw it away. Celebrating know. your love the for apples? It's right there. He's literally putting it on the counter right above the trash can. Tim J, let me ask That's you a weird. question. Y- yes? If you're at the freezer and you're getting a cup of ice water or whatever, and you drop a piece of ice in front of the fridge, are you the kind of guy to bend over and pick up the ice? Yes, I am. Or are you the no, kind of guy not. to kick it under the fridge? No, you know what he does? Scout, Gatsby, look what I got. A cube. A ice cube for you. Oh, okay. Because I'm, I'm a fridge kicker. I'll kick <laughs> it right under the fridge. Oh, I'll leave it there. It'll, it'll evaporate going somewhere. Yeah. All right. So, Michelle, come on. There are more important things to worry about than these little bitty apple produce stickers that they stick on the apples. Come on. Mm-hmm. It's a little thing that builds up. You know what it is? It's death by a thousand cuts. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. See? Mm-hmm. Oh, little, so they build up. Things, and one day she's going to flip and bleed. So you're saying that our relationship is death by a thousand cuts? And it's, it's, also, also yeah. the other thing, too. Another thing. Just one more thing. Yeah. Um, you know how I tell you the left side of the counter is for the clean dishes <laughs> and the right side of the counter is for the dirty dishes? Yeah. I've been doing this for 30 years the exact same way because the dishwasher's always been on to the left, right? Or to the right. And you put the dirty dishes in and you put the clean uh, dishes to the left. Yeah. And what do you do every day? We come down, and right where we are trying to put clean dishes, you have placed a pile, and you stack them like you're an architect. You'll put a plate <laughs> on like, top of a glass. Like a Jenga. A I'll play, yes. I play kitchen Jenga with uh, breakable do. items. You do. And I'm like, I mean, even when we had little kids, I was like, you can't do this. They'll just run right uh, by, and they might bump it, and the whole thing is going to go collapsing. I can't. You still do it. I can't do anything no. right. No. Well, Doesn't cut, bro. Anymore. Thousand cuts. All right, it's so cut I'll, number six eighty four right there. I'll, I'll, <laughs> there you go. I'll try to. I'll. I think we're over a thousand by this point. Uh, well. uh, I'll. I'll try to put the apple stickers in the trash if that will uh, extend our marriage. Yeah. yeah. Please try. Will uh, you really though? I, I. I really will though. Will you really though? Yes, I see, will see though. Here? You know what that means? What? That means you really will. It means you will make an effort. <laughs> Come on, bro. Okay. You got this. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Goodbye. It's, you know, it's, I absolutely have to treat you like a toddler now. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like you're already regressing. Todd. Well, Where? I do have the first four letters, yeah. so. Yeah. I know. All right. Bye. Have fun. Whoa. So that's 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 typical day at my house. Boy, the Michelle airing of grievances. Yeah, <sighs> I like it. So it's like a, a, another festivist moment. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the eve of Easter Sunday, right? It's another festival. Are we working Friday? Yes. Okay, I'm asking. Yeah, we always work Friday. Uh, yeah. I, I well, I can't. I'm going to church yeah. on Friday all day. You're froggy. You're here 6 on Friday. Six a.m. to six p.m. You stop it. Our Amen. kids are out of school, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah kids I think, are out of school. I think what? Our, kids are out of school. Yeah. Is every county out of school? I don't think they call it you know Good Friday anymore because you know it's too religious. But they call it like some kind of teacher day or or no school day. Because you don't take Easter Monday off, right? It's holidays and Sunday. Hey, uh, before I forget, and I, I kept this in the pile, we did this late in the show yesterday. I just wanted to bring it up again. Uh, just a, a quick warning. This scam is circulating around the country, and there's a new twist to the scam, and that is <laughs> that you've got, scammers that get a hold of people they claim to be their bank so scammers will call people up or even approach via email try to get the person's uh banking information you know the login the password you know trying to convince people they're from the bank yes we've had a computer situation we have a we we need to make sure you are who you are uh we need to do a an identity verification. Uh, can we please, uh, we need to verify your login name and your password to make sure 
uh, that you are who you are. Uh, there's been so they'll, they'll even say that uh, they're investigating potential fraud, and they're the fraudsters. So first of all, you never give your login information and password to anyone that calls you up pretending to be from your bank. So, and a lot of times. You know, whether it's email, text, or a phone call, a lot of times it's sometimes it's a text that leads to a phone call. Whatever you do. And you know what they, these scamsters, they pick like popular banks and they send out like hundreds of thousands knowing that all they need is a good handful on any given day. And if you send out hundreds of thousands of potential scams to uh, people around the country, and you say, yeah, I'm with Bank of America or Wells Fargo or, you know, pick a credit union that you're going to, with with volume, you're going to find some customers. And then the individuals that fall for the crap will give them login information. Don't fall for that. But then the reason why I'm really bringing this up is there's a new twist to this whole deal where the scammers are getting the password information, the login information, PIN numbers and then they're telling people to put their debit cards or credit cards into their mailbox. And then you'll have the scamsters come by the house. So th- these are not, these are more local scam artists that are scamming people. Not the you know international boiler rooms, which are trying to do just internet only. You have, this scam is rotating across the country right now where they're targeting people in a particular city. They call them up. They tell them, yep, uh, we're, we're security is going to come by. You, you need to put your bank cards or your debit card into your mailbox. So people are reporting this to cops around the country. Don't fall for this. Who the hell is going to listen to some phone caller? Hold, hold on. Hey, 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 hang on a minute. We're getting calls? Yeah, we're getting calls. Just a guy got this yesterday. Hang on a minute. Hi, good morning. Who's this? Hey, it's your favorite Villages truck driver. Oh, yeah. What was your first name again? Kevin. Uh, Kevin. All right. So what happened to you? Just say Kevin. Yeah. Lady calls me and she goes, uh, hey, I'm with TransUnion uh, Credit and starts, and I was just Milton Fudge Counter. I went, huh? What? Right. Huh? And kept doing it. And she finally just hung up on me. She kept trying to ask for information. And every time she asked for something, I went, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she finally just hung up. Oh, man, so they tried to scam you yesterday. Yeah, just yesterday. This is a TransUnion credit union we have, and I went, hey, what? <laughs> Sir, what'd you say when okay. they, what'd you say? I, did, I just kept doing the Milton Fudge Cow voice. Give it to us again. <laughs> Let me hear it. Oh, come on, Froggy. Busting my chops here. I went, what? Can I hear what? <laughs> yeah. She, she bitched again. good. Up. Good stuff. Right, Kevin, thanks for the call, buddy. That guy sounds just All like right, I love you guys. Uh, I love you too, man. All right, Kevin. All right, don't fall for these scams. Don't. Kevin's been inhaling some truck if, fumes. If, <laughs> if, if anyone tells you to put your debit card or your credit card in your mailbox, don't do it. I mean, what kind of idiot does that? Yeah, so our security department's going to swing by the house. Just put your credit card, debit card in your mailbox. And is that the same idiot that just gave them all the uh, login information for the bank account online? Gave them the PIN number for the debit card that they'll put in their mailbox? I mean, hey, come on. My name is Kevin. Hey, hey what? 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 Hey. All right, Kevin. I want to call my daughter, Chloe, in a few minutes. Hey, Chloe, if you're listening, I got to call you on something. Also, there is like this freak accident that happened to a dog groomer. A dog groomer has lost her hand. <laughs> why are you, why are you laugh? What is wrong with you? What is wrong okay, with you? It's not ha-ha funny. Come on. Fester, the way you're acting, it's out of hand. Come on. Froggy. Right, That's well, funny. Yeah, she's without a hand. I'll tell you why. Well, I'll hand right, I'll hold on. You, Froggy. Right, we're loaded. <laughs> we're loaded next. Don't move. This uh, brings to an end over an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ here on the MJ Morning Show. Uh, the 9 o'clock hour straight ahead, so I'll do all of what I just mentioned, plus more. We'll also give away sticks with Foreigner and John Waite tickets. Concert's going to be in July at the Mid-Florida Credit Union Amphitheater. So sticks, Foreigner, John Waite. We have your tickets. We'll give away next hour here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105, so don't move. Now... The folks at Veterans Ford are...
Bang here, 903. And yes, Froggy has returned today. You were so uh, for, what was that for? I was going to tell Froggy how sorely missed he was. You were. I Always. miss you guys too. Uh, Froggy is now up to, uh, I think, day 110 of uh, days off this year. That's not true. Uh, Give me the, a break. Listen, the. I don't take days off, I work. <laughs> I've got a multi billion dollar business to. <laughs> multi what? Multi zillion okay, dollar yeah. business after my meeting with Mattress Mac. You didn't meet with Mattress uh, Mac. Was he there? Did the you crap. see him? Did he come yeah. to the show? Yeah, yeah, we had a meeting. But the, the worst kept secret is listen, after 42 years of broadcasting, Right, forty-two years of doing this, I get, I take, I, I get contractually, I get six weeks off a year, which I think is reasonable. You know, I've been doing this for forty-two years, and for twenty-two of those years, I was doing two shows a day. Right, so the worst kept secret here is if I take all six weeks, then uh, you know, Froggy and and Fester, you guys, you you guys get even more vacation than me because you guys will take days off. When I'm still working, because oh, yeah. we can't always align all of the vacations. Yes. So, well, if you uh, want the Fester and Froggy and Roxanne morning show, you will be more than happy to do it. All I right. Will, and will, when I, I when Travis gave me my first contract here for thirty one thousand dollars a year, <laughs> right. okay, right. I said I'm going to have to go out and work a bunch of weeks and do I doing this? And he said, no problem. So that's in my contract for perpetuity. For poop to poop That's right. <laughs> and I'll do as I please. Yeah. This, uh, uh, this is a hobby job. It's like Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Hobby Jobby. The breaking news on the MJ Morning Show. This is the first thing we uttered this morning, and we've discussed this several times, is this incredible story, the incredible video of what happened up in Baltimore where a major thoroughfare is crippled, I-695, the bridge is gone after a cargo ship carrying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of containers crashed into the bridge at about 1.30 this morning, knocking a, what is it, a quarter-mile section? I mean, it's a, hundreds and hundreds of feet of the bridge, including the highest point of the bridge, gone. Completely collapsed. So let me, let me look at the latest here from CNN. And this was just updated Two minutes ago, just updated, uh, on the Baltimore uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge Collapse, rescue workers in Baltimore are searching for as many as seven people after a major bridge in the city's port was struck by a container ship early Tuesday. Officials said it's an active search and rescue situation. The city's fire chief said, and the number of missing people could change. Two people uh, have been saved from the water so far, according to the Baltimore Fire Chief. Video shows the collapse. And, folks, it is dramatic. It is stunning video. Uh, crystal clear. It, sure, it was 1.30 in the morning, but the there was enough light. And you've got a like a horizon full-width surveillance camera that captured the ship crashing into the bridge and the whole bridge collapsing and caught on video as the vessel runs into it. You don't see, because of the darkness, you can see the vessel underneath. So and, you can see the vessel yeah. approaching, lights are on, lights are off yep. on the vessel. Yep. And I saw reports that there were some... Some lights on, lights off. There might have been some power issues on the boat. Yeah, there's early speculation, maybe a rudder or power issue uh, on the vessel. But where were the the pilot uh, tugs? Don't you mean tugboats? Well, yeah, the, but the pilots. They're called the harbor pilots, and they pull them out. No, no, they they kind of like just guide the way. They, they don't pull them exactly. Well. What happens is... How do you know? Well, well hang on. I'm, the, I'm an expert on tugging hey, and pulling. The, the harbor, <laughs> the pilots, they actually go in many ports. The pilots board the vessel. They'll they'll climb up like a rope ladder, and the pilots uh, go onto the vessels 
because the pilots, they know the harbors inside and out better than the captains of the vessel. So in many ports around the world, there is a local harbor pilot that actually goes up on the bridge to navigate the ship. So I don't know. Miami has that for uh, cruise ships. We we have it here. We've got harbor pilots right here in Tampa Bay. We have that. Uh, Okay, so now we are hearing that it was a local pilot that was was uh, was on the the ship. Is that is that what you're hearing, Andrew? All right, Andrew is saying it was a Baltimore local uh, a pilot. So he hit that, it. Yeah. So it's not like a, a foreign crew. It was a local pilot that was commanding the vessel when it hit the bridge. So we still don't know though if there was. A, and forgive my lack of knowledge when it comes to ships. But something well, I don't have, have any great knowledge either. But. Yeah, something could have gone wrong that was not fault of the captain, potentially. Well, no, that's what we said. So yeah. the first thing we said were rumors of maybe power problems and a rudder problem. So, you know, that's that's what we just said a few minutes ago, that uh, if the, if you have a rudder or some kind of a, a control issue, uh, even if you have an experienced pilot uh, up on the bridge, if there's a, a technical issue, that's going to preclude him from doing his job safely. So it might be an unavoidable situation where the ship lost power. Yeah. yeah. He better get his story straight. All right. Now, well, Andrew, Andrew, hold on. Turn your mic on, Andrew. Andrew has been digging into this thing, and obviously he can uh, dig into a lot of sources while we're on the air. All right. So what are you hearing on this? This, this? I, I'm reading a couple of sources that say the same ship was involved in a collision leaving the port of Antwerp. Oh, Antwerp. In 2016. What'd you call me? In, in Belgium? Isn't Antwerp in Belgium? Yes, it is. Well, thank you. You know, when someone sent me a DM, I didn't think about this. Now, we're talking about loss of life, so logistics aren't aren't as big of a problem. But I guess the, all the cruise ships come through that same way. So you'll have these cruise ships that'll be stuck out there until this gets resolved, until oh, they can make it make their way back. Jeez. They have to go to a different port, or if the cruise ship is on the other side of the bridge, they're not passing out. Exactly. Yes, this port is now... No longer accessible. That is insane. So th- this is the port, the whole port, uh, the whole entire port of Baltimore is shut down right now. Wow. Uh, so as many as uh, seven people. Video shows the collapse of the 1.6 mile long four lane bridge after it was hit by the vessel. Uh, an official told CNN conditions were unsafe for rescuers due to the objects hanging from the structure. Freezing conditions and limited visibility. The bridge extends over the uh, Patapsco River uh, and serves as the outermost crossing of the Baltimore Harbor. It is an essential link of Interstate 695, part of the whole Baltimore Beltway. Uh, Divers are in the water. Operations are continuing. This is a massive disaster response. Think about cars just driving down the interstate not knowing the bridge is gone. Yeah. I mean, the, the scenarios of the people and the yeah, different I, situations. Yeah, that's I sort of want to think about Well, I mean, it. it's, it's something to talk about. Yeah, Bridget, I, you get, I, I get creeped out driving. I always have gotten creeped out driving over the sunshine. Now this is going to make it worse. Well, I wonder if the bridge collapsed, and you can see that on video as the ship is hitting the bridge and this massive full center, uh, center span comes down. So what you're saying, Fester... Is somebody's driving on solid someone's land. Dri- so, someone's on the, the the ramp up, and then they don't. I wonder if any cars went in as the bridge was missing in the dark. That's that's a good oh, question. That is horrific. Or yes. like jamming on the brakes and yeah. you're dangling over the side. I don't. I don't know. Remember the Skyway? That guy went back to get his golf clubs. What? It was. There was a teetering car. Yeah. And the guy opened his trunk and took his golf clubs out. He was trying to get his dog. Oh. oh I thought, I thought it was golf clubs. Uh, maybe. Can you guys get your freaking story straight, please? I got to look it up. I got dogs, golf clubs. I'm pretty Come sure on. it was his dog. I don't, need, I don't need you guys spewing erroneous information. Yeah, they're expensive <laughs> clubs. I think they're pings. <laughs> they're pings. It was, it was Martin. Uh, anyway, so uh, it's going to be, I'm sure, days before all the details, all the facts come out uh, on the total number of casualties but the bridge collapsing is just stunning. I don't see any cars on there, though. Where are those? When you look at the still picture of the bridge, you can see headlights crossing, taillights and headlights. But here's, Why do they keep showing it? 
They're going to show it a billion gonna, times. Yeah, they, yeah they, it's on a loop. They're going to keep showing the video on TV. It's it's spectacular watching this. It's insane. Now, the Baltimore Harbor is shut down because you got this span that is completely blocking the water. The the bridge fell into the water. You can't get anything by. No ships can get in and out of Baltimore Harbor. Because you got a massive bridge that has fallen and is blocking the shipping channels. I mean, how long is it going to take them to get that out of there in order to open up the channels? This is it's, massive yeah. operation. It's, yeah. it's incomprehensible what, what happened here, the, the gravity. And uh, Andrew uh, mentioned earlier that this is going to screw with supply chains. For sure. Uh, is this going to have an effect on the East Coast? As far as supplies, what you know, Baltimore is a very active port. Yeah, how yeah. Fixture's going to get there it's now. The biggest, probably one of the biggest Mid Atlantic ports. It is. It's, yeah. It is one of the biggest Mid Atlantic ports. The the port of Baltimore. Absolutely. All right, I got to get hold of Chloe, and then we have this dog groomer accident, which is, I don't know what the hell. Well, we know it happened, but it's like, how does this happen? Uh, let, let me just give you this quickly, and Fester, do me a favor. Can you please? Not act like a buffoon. Yeah, please. And, and laugh at this woman's predicament. I don't need you being a jackass, all right? I will not laugh at this woman's predicament. Thank you. Dude, I'm, no, you, that's, you're, that sounds mocking. No, no, that, that, no. This is mocking. I know mocking, and this is mocking, but I will tell you, I will be. You're a mocker. I will be. I will be emotionless. I'll be like an AI robot. It's terrible. And deliver uh, you know, this no. Woman, this woman has feelings. This woman has a family, yes. all right? I will she has not, a lot of the well. I will not mock. I don't know how this happens. Well, Again, we know wh- how it happened, but you know, you say to yourself, "How does this happen?" A South Carolina dog groomer lost her hand after a freak accident with a hair dryer. She's just, you know, oh no, shampooing and cutting dogs' hairs <laughs> or hair, and she loses her hand because of a hair dryer fiasco. That's awful. I use a hair dryer every night. All right. Here's what happened. I'm going to crotch. She lost her... All right, Froggy. I did, but that's how I fall asleep. Crotch you it know, I'm going to have to suspend you guys. Froggy. Please, please. For how long? You, you yes. guys need to be banished. Give me two weeks or yeah, something. Between Fester mocking the story and you blowing your crotch with a hair dryer. I mean, I, you know... You got to get relaxed somehow. I, I'd like to point out I'm not mocking the story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can I give the details here, please? Please, please. please. South Carolina woman has lost her hand. It's a freak accident. She's now forced to leave her cherished career as a dog groomer because of this horrific injury. Oh, come on. She could learn a word. I mean, the drummer for... uh uh, so Def Leppard, De- Def, Def, Def Leppard, <laughs> Def Leppard. Yeah, Rick, was back Rick, on tour. His to name, is, name is Rick Allen. Yes. Yeah. I mean, come on. Let's be inspired. He was in a Corvette crash and lost his arm. Yeah. Yes. If you could do it, you could yeah. groom. All right. So, she, yeah, she needs to get like like foot pedals to like groom the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, uh, see, that's insensitive. Well, I, yeah, that was insensitive. Why would I'm, you do that? I, love, Jay, I don't I, appreciate you mocking I, this story. Fester, was that funny? What he said? I, I love Def Leppard. You, uh, get, you guys uh, gonna banish uh, me? Uh, <laughs> Oh. All right, Mary Wilson was drying her hair before bed at her home in South Carolina. She passed out while the hair dryer was still running on high power. Oh my God. She laid on the floor for about 20 minutes. Her partner found her on top of the hair dryer. Your hand, your hand. I look at my hand. I don't even register that it's part of me. It didn't even look recognizable. She was rushed to the hospital. They had to amputate her hand and wrist due to the severe nerve damage because the hair dryer's heat was on her hand for 20 minutes while she had passed out with her hair dryer. What? That's happened to me before. When I first saw this, I'm like, my God, it was like some kind of a dog grooming accident. I thought maybe... Yeah. Well, you know, it could have been the same thing because you use hair dryers to dry dogs. I was wondering if she collapsed and fainted, and it it, it could have been, I guess, the dog dryer as well. How hot was that thing? She was rushed to the hospital. They had to amputate uh, the hand and wrist. Uh, she thinks that she got a shock from the appliance, and that caused her to pass out. 
that a, a shock like rendered her unconscious. Like a frayed then, wire or a then the hair dryer was at full blaring speed and it it destroyed her hand. Twenty minutes the hot hair dryer on high was oh. on her hand and wrist. Oh my gosh. Ow. I have no comment. <laughs> she claimed that the blow dryer did not have an automatic shutoff. Oh, well, that sucks. The one I had in my uh, hotel this week when I was crotching, dr- when I was crotch drying, uh, oh, it I turned t- off itself. I, I was surprised. Well, you know, seriously, it, you've had this happen. If you even get it too close to your head, there's like a safety fuse in those hair dryers. I've seen them turn off. If they get too hot or overheated, so why the hell did this hair dryer not shut off? And she like essentially ruined her hand and wrist. They couldn't even. She could, looked at her and she didn't even recognize it as her hand after twenty minutes on high. Is that not the freakiest accident you've ever heard of? Yeah, that's crazy. Boy, we've had two blow dryer story days because this one and then yesterday, what to do when you pee your pants on Price is Right? Pull out the blow dryer. Oh, that's right. There's. If you missed it, folks, this protocol on The Price is Right. When contestants get too excited after winning and they pee their pants, they have a special curtain backstage and they have a blow dryer to dry contestants who pee their pants because they're so excited because they want a, you know, a, 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 a washer-dryer set or something. Somebody tell this groomer maybe Drew Carey's hiring. Especially that wasn't very funny. It wasn't meant to be funny. It wasn't a joke. It was just a comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you, I'm going to give you a hand for that for being so. Oh. Uh, come on, guys! Really? Oh. All right, nine twenty at the MJ Morning Show. How about the sticks, foreigner, and John Wade tickets? How about it? How about I'm gonna, it? I'm going mm-hmm. to I'm going to reward you right now. Oh, and then uh, hey, Chloe, if you're listening, I got to call Chloe. I've got a story about why are people in their twenties miserable these days? Is that true? So Chloe's in her twenties. Chloe's twenty two. My daughter's going to be 23 in August. So next, I want to call up Chloe and see if she concurs. Or agrees. Uh, Well, that would be the same thing, Froggy. Or both. Uh, No, but people in their 20s, there's like this uh, this plague now where people in their 20s are allegedly miserable right now. Really? Uh, Yeah. Well, that's why I want to- I don't know. I want to call Chloe and see. All right. Hold on. Let's do the tickets right now. How'd you like to see Sticks with Foreigner? And John Waite, Saturday, July 20th at the Mid-Florida Credit Union Amphitheater. If you're caller 25 right now, 800-990-1047, you will win the tickets. Got a pair of tickets right now for you. Caller 25, 800-990-1047. Good luck from the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. And we got a nice, long, final chunk of the show next, including... uh, Mid 20s or 20 something misery. We need to confirm or deny this uh, next on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. The folks at Two College Brothers.
Oh, Fast Run Troy, glad you could make it for the final segment of the show. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right, thank I, you. Thank I you just very bought much. This, uh, yeah, I just quite. bought this hot penny stock, and the market <laughs> just opened, and I'm watching this company from Singapore go to the moon, oh, baby! You, you couldn't watch it in the studio? You have to be, what, down the halls? Wow. Hey, let, let me ask you a question. What? Like a wolf of Wall Street. Yesterday morning, right. yesterday morning I, I was outside of the hallway, yeah. I, and I, I was looking for you, and I... I was right outside of the studio door, and I said, Fester, come here. And, and you're like, I can't come right now. And, and like, your voice came from one of the ro- What yeah. room were you in, and what the hell were you doing? So we have a long hallway. This radio station is surprisingly unattractive. It's just a long hallway where this, all the radio stations are. This is really one of the worst, worst designed radio stations that I've ever been in in my life. So- I'm pretty fat. And, and, and listen, Beasley inherited it, but they could have walked away from this. I don't know why they just signed a new lease here. I don't know. I mean, they, you know, they should have moved to a new building because I think there's, I think there's plenty of office space. Why don't we just move to another building and build from scratch? Anyway, we're here. Yeah, all right, and anyway. Two fat people can't walk down the hallway together. <laughs> like if me and Orlando were passing each other, it's like. We one of us has to step aside. <laughs> anyway, that's not right. here nor there. Right. We have a production studio right. to okay. the left yeah. behind Froggy to the left that I mean I go in there yeah. and there's so, a little but, midget desk. But the point is yesterday, yeah. I'm like, Fester, come here, hurry. And you're like, I can't come right now. And uh, the voice comes from like a, a room across the hall. I didn't right. see where you were. What the hell were you doing? Oh no, oh no, oh no. What? The penny stock is tanking. The penny stock is tanking. <laughs> oh no. Bail, bail, Can we talk bail. about something a little more important and a, bit, a very special anniversary coming up? Oh, whose anniversary is it? On Friday, we should we need to fin- figure out a way to celebrate this, guys. Do you know what the 25th anniversary? What happened 25 years ago on uh, March 29th? So coming up this Friday? Yes, mm-hmm. a humongous 
anniversary. What, this Friday, March 29th, is the 25th anniversary of something? Yes. Let me guess. Saved by the bell went off the air. It was the day that Fabio was on a roller coaster and got hit in the face with a goose. Did you know that? 25 years, guys. Oh. <laughs> in the video, I just saw the video. It is hilarious with all the blood. So maybe yeah. we could do a goose thing on Friday. Hey, I'll bring a goose and smack you in the face with it. Okay. Hey, how about you have Hal Herman come in and do a special Fabio goose anniversary edition on Friday? How about that? A goose anniversary? A goose anniversary. <laughs> uh, uh, seriously, how about you do that? I, I, I am I, I am telling the truth, though. It really happened March 29th, 1999. I, I completely believe you. At Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Yes. Yeah, he was he on the Loch Ness Monster? He was on something, um, and uh, it's one of the greatest videos I've ever seen in my life, if, oh, I, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah, I think we've got audio from the actual event. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I can't believe it's like, oh, butter. <laughs> All right, so I just want to let you know. All right, and then we can count on Hal Herman? Oh, sure, he'll be here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first on Friday. Hal Herman headlines, because the truth matters. Yes, very excited. Is Fabio still alive? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. he's still alive. Does he still have the hair? That's the question. Professor, bring up the video of the roller coaster thing. I just need to laugh. I gotta find out if he's still alive. Yeah, I want. I haven't heard from. Of course, oh, 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 Fabio is sixty-five years old. Well, that's why he's laying low because he, you know, he's probably one of those. He always felt he was such a hunk, and then he, he get to be sixty-five, and things start to fall he apart. He still looks great, right? Yeah, I mean, maybe he's bald. Does he still? Maybe we haven't heard from him because he doesn't have that that flowing mane of hair any longer. Can't believe you say such a thing. Maybe he's counting all that. I can't believe it's not butter money. Spray. <laughs> All right, I got to call Chloe here. What time is it? Nine thirty-three. Oh, uh, Andrew, who won the tickets to Sticks, Foreigner, and John Waite? Do you have the turn on your microphone? And uh, let's announce the winner. Congratulate them. Uh, his name was Al. I don't have the last name in front of me right now. I'm ready opening that because you didn't ask. Did he say you can call me Al? Uh, he, <laughs> I guess I do have permission to call him that. Da, da, you da, can da, call da. me Betty. Yeah. Betty, when you call me. Yeah, little roly poly, little bat faced girl. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? The video. There were incidents and accidents. There were, <laughs> there were hints and allegations. Hints and allegations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're watching the Fabio video. <laughs> Froggy's looking at so Froggy. Fro, Fro, right. He's like, "Ow, my ribs!" <laughs> like, so, oh my god, I, I can't remember that video. I don't yeah, think I've ever seen that. Yeah, Fabio was like at some promotion <laughs> at Bush Gardens Williamsburg, oh. not not Bush Gardens Tampa Bay, but you know, I grew up. In Virginia Beach. I grew up uh, in, in Virginia Beach, Virginia, you know, just, you know, 45 minutes away from Williamsburg. Right. And I went to Bush Gardens all the time. And he, what was it? It's 1999? Yeah, turn it out, turn it Oh, no, it's, it's March 30th. You said March 29th. <gasps> uh-huh. Oh, no. Yeah, dude. No, the internet said. No, it says from March 30th, 1999. Get the date right, Frog. That's wrong. <laughs> and then the the video of the roller coaster coming back in. I think it was. Let me hear him explain it. Well, I don't know if there's audio of. I don't Apollo's know if he's interviewed. Chariot was the name of the ride. Okay, so it was a. It was a Loch Ness monster. It was a brand new roller coaster, and Fabia was in the lead car, and a a goose smashed into his face, and he. Oh, they, oh they, no! How, he broke his nose. Oh. You know, how's that for oh. like? It, it, it's the, something on my face. Something's <laughs> weird. She's like patting him. His passenger next to him. Oh, it's no. the grand opening of the new roller coaster, oh, and like from the Jenny Jones show. I'm here today, um, just to say, you know, it's like it was a miracle, but uh, it wasn't a freak accident, and it's going to happen again. And you know, I cannot live with my conscience no, that the ride is still running, and Ooh. maybe you know, a person or even a child can be killed. But Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Was Fabio Fabio was hired like to help promote the grand opening of the roller coaster? <laughs> and then he's, and then he's, he's talking about kids getting killed by geese. <laughs> and then he's making the rounds on TV telling him that you you got to shut this down. Uh-huh. I'm sorry about my Fabio <laughs> tangent. <laughs> but wait a minute. Did it happen? But the on, internet to me uh, it says the 29th. I right, cuz the video right here that. March 29th, 1999. 
All right, well, that's that's what Google says, but then on YouTube it says March 30th. So, all right, so you want to celebrate the... Hal will come in with a, with a dead goose, and you, we're going to celebrate. You want to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Fabio getting smashed in the face with a goose yes. at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg. Absolutely. Thank if you. anybody has a dead goose, let me know. Email me. Or a living goose that we could just, you know... No. You know what we ought to do? We ought to reenact it and see if we can get on a ride at Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay. How are you going to hit it with a goose? No, no, no. We'll throw a bag of sacrete into Fester's face. Yes. Yeah. You know what? A, a flying bag of sacrete. That might work out yeah. great. Oh, I think so. Uh, let me call Chloe okay, here. Okay, please. Hang on a minute. All right, calling my fabulous daughter, Chloe. Uh, I'm bringing her in as an expert witness here on the MJ Morning Show. Hello? Uh, Chloe? Yeah? All right. uh, You are hereby sworn in as an expert witness on the MJ Morning Show. The reason why I'm calling you in the final minutes of the program today is I saw a post on Reddit. Why are people in their 20s miserable nowadays? We're told that our 20s are supposed to be fun but a lot of people in their 20s are really, really unhappy. I don't know if this has always been the case or if it's something with this current generation. I also don't know if most people are happy in their 20s and if I'm speaking from my limited experience. All right, now, Chloe, I'm going right to the source here. I'm going right to the the horse's mouth, or in Fabio's case, the... Goose's mouth, the, yes. The goose's beak. Mm. All right, Chloe, you are 22. You'll be 23 in August. Are you miserable? I don't think I'm miserable. I mean, yeah, I'm still in my early 20s, so, I mean, I obviously still have some ways to go, but as of right now, I don't think my my 20s are that miserable. I wouldn't characterize it as that. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Are there some days where I'm like, wow, my life sucks? Yeah, but I feel like... Whoa, 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 hold on. Hold on. What, what, what about your life sucks on certain days? I don't know. Like yesterday, you were like, Chloe, oh, feed the dog. God, that and does I was suck. Like, Are you kidding me? Wait, 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 wait. Hold Is on. Is that real? Hold on. Your day sucks because I say, Chloe, <laughs> feed the dogs? I- Right. Yeah, like totally disrupted me. This is hey, quite an MJ, indication. <laughs> MJ, listen, I think this is a very serious issue. I think we should take calls from 20 year olds maybe tomorrow at a different time where maybe there'll be a few more listeners. And I don't know that Chloe is the absolute best example to judge all 20 year olds by. That's, yeah, if if she thinks her life sucks because I asked her to feed I mean, the dogs, yeah. yeah, we got a problem here. I mean, it's not like milk like cows. I mean, life really think- sucked the year you were in Scotland. Go the- clean the manure out of the barn. Yeah. When I was 22, I swear I was miserable. See, when I was tw- in my 20s, I was so happy, but I was so drunk most of the time. Right. But I think that the big difference, Chloe, is like you guys have social media, so we know there's a sort of a negativity, depression factor there at times. Yeah. And and then that means you're also very up to date on things happening in the world, and it seems like a heavy place. But when I was in my 20s, there was no social media. I didn't know what was going on in the world. I just knew what was going on where the drink specials were on, on a Wednesday night. That's right. Did you say night. you were drunk during your entire 20s? <laughs> Low 20s. Like, you know, Chloe's age. Well, like every day you were no, liquored up? No, not every oh, day. Yeah. Every, I mean, every weekend. So Wednesday through Sunday. So 20 through <laughs> 20 what were you hammered? I, well, I was one of those people. I did not start drinking a sip of alcohol until I was 20, uh, 21. So I was really good until I was 21. And then I just and then it's fell all, apart. Let it all out. <laughs> all right, so 21 to what age in your 20s were you, were you liquefied? Well, I got... I got married, you know, I got engaged, and then I was like, okay, we need to be serious now about life. So, you know, 20 to 23-ish, or 21 to 23-ish, so like two solid years. Gotcha. I was miserable because I was a producer on this show when I was 22. (laughs) (laughs) Stop it, you little bitch. (laughs) See? See? I think it's so funny when you call me that because I will choke you out (laughs) jujitsu style. (laughs) What do, you, what do you think, Giselle Bunchins? Yes, I'm uh, him. Yeah. Yeah. Boyfriend. Her, yeah. All right, so Chloe, uh, for the most part, you're happy. Do, let me let me ask you this, and I think Fester's got a good point. I mean, we're doing this very late in the show, and I really don't have time to take phone calls, and it might not be the most conducive time. But maybe tomorrow we'll bring this back yeah. and do this earlier in the show and ask a bunch of twenty somethings because we have the widest demographic. Right. I am I am confident. This morning show, we have the widest demographic of listeners from 
uh, kids, teenagers, all the way through, uh, you know, a, a couple of days away from the funeral home. We've got we got a we have a wide uh, seriously. Our spectrum of listeners is from the youngest to the oldest. We have a wide listenership. So tomorrow morning we'll ask the question. But before I let you go, Chloe, so you're relatively happy in your twenties, but you know there are days of misery, like when I ask you to feed the dogs. <laughs> It's tough uh, stuff. Yeah, man. it's real, really tough. I mean, you're man. This, this is uh, this is the stuff that that misery is made of. But do you have any friends in their twenties that you know are miserable? Um, I mean, a miserable can look like a lot of things. Like I know people who are, you know, maybe stressed out and nervous because they don't really know what they want to do with their life. So yeah. it's kind of like freaking them out and stuff. And you know that can cause all kinds of emotions. Um. But I don't know. I, I'd actually be interested to hear you take calls on this because I don't think I'm the accurate sample. <laughs> that you All right. Want. So I need you up early tomorrow. Uh, so we'll okay. talk. We'll talk to you again tomorrow, and then we'll try to launch into calls from a whole bunch of twenty-something listeners to find out if this is a thing that people in their twenties these days are miserable. That's a good idea. You had okay. Andrew. Good idea. Yeah. Have no, no. Fester had the idea. Him. No team. way, he can't come up with that. You you did it. Yeah, it's all MJ. It's all Fester can't come up with that idea. It's all Fester. No. Isn't no crap from apple butter. That was your good it's idea. All, all Fester. Yeah, I know crap from apple butter once I taste it. <laughs> <laughs> take it back. Take it back. I take it back. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I, I, it's a texture. Wait, how else would you know? It looks so similar. All right, Chloe, <laughs> you have to taste it. All right, somebody bash me in the face with a goose, please. All right. Oh, all right Friday. Friday. Chloe, try. <laughs> Chloe, try to have a great uh, day. Okay. I will. Just don't ask me to feed the dogs. Oh, we stop it. Really? <laughs> Tough life. All right. Goodbye. All righty. Bye. She sounds like she's in a chipper mood today. <sighs> my dad had my brother and I digging out three tons of muck in the in the <laughs> lake behind our house when we were like 11 and 9 years old or 12 and Dude. 9 or whatever the hell it was. I, uh, yeah. I scraped copper for my plumbing supply family. <laughs> Try doing that. Uh, anything else before we get out of here? Nah, it's- nah. Any final words, uh, Fester? None. Uh, Roxanne, any final words? I want to talk to all these young, unhappy people tomorrow. All right. Well, we'll find out. We'll, yeah. do a, we'll do a case study live on the MJ Morning Show. Froggy, anything before we go? I'll get ready for Friday. Fabio Goose Day. All right. Uh, thoughts for all the people involved in families. On the Baltimore Bridge tragedy, what a what a total mess! That's what I meant to say. That's awful. I meant to say, yeah. Yeah. How about how about you have compassion? I I, I just, thought we we're doing just, jokes, and then you just, go to that. Just once in your life, have, <laughs> have compassion. Kick me right in the junk with yeah, that right. one. Just I just need just one ounce of compassion out of you. Just I'll, like one day a month. How about that? I'll work on it. All right, nine forty-five. MJ Morning Show on Q one hundred five. Have a great day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And let's be careful out there. <laughs> Now.